ask the burning question here in just a few. Got to hit your live chat so we can get you on there. And let's get our poll question up. <clears throat> we got a horrifying history this time for you. So get ready uh, for that in the final period. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? We thank you for being with us. All right, there you go. Hopefully everybody starts coming on. Poll question is up. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? The D.B. Co DB Cooper's disappearance, JFK shooting, Betty and Barney abduction, or Stonehenge? Stonehenge. Let us know. Thank you for coming on and liking and sharing. So far, Stonehenge. Wow. All right. It's Weird Wednesday, so we had our... Here we go. Good morning, Pete. How you doing? I'll tell them when I get on the air. Just hello to them. You know what? It's that time again. It's a weird Wincy. Let's get weird with you. No, 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 we're going to go into a strange and unusual news for you. Oh, my goodness. We'll also, of course, have Horrified History 101 with Brenda Gasky in the final period. Let's get ready for all that. It's a TGIW Weird Wednesday. It's Rhino Radio Penitentiary. I'm your host of the most, the one, the only, Ryan O'Neill. And, of course... 50,000 plus of you worldwide on that shoutcast. Shout it out loud across that Rhino Radio media page. Earth, Rock, Radio, New Mexico, Arizona, and the Navajo Nation. We're across the British Columbia Isles of Canada, eh? 
And finally, the Jordan Communication, the family radio stations, East Alabama, West Georgia, included right here in 99.1 FM, WQE to Key, home of news, inspirational talk, and Southern sports, Atlanta Metro Atlanta's only real talk station. That's right. We're live, live, live all day. And if you're not live with us, you're listening to AI. And we're not AI. We're real. We're all right. Stay with us. Coming up a lot in store for you. Three periods of play. Let's kick it off right now. To my haters, tell them, Triple. Thank you, Hunter, for telling them what the truth is out there. Welcome into this edition of Rhino Radio Penitentiary on another weird Wednesday. Coming up this morning, Brenda Gasky joins us from Horrifying History. Get your pens and papers ready. We're going to dive into another, another another topic this morning that's going to get you going, hmm, that happened? Things that make you go, hmm. That's right. Brenda Gasky of Horrifying History joins us this morning, a podcast that where she uh, stains the blood of history with the unknown, the paranormal, and even more. We get a little scary with her this morning. That's in the final period. Also, we'll have some weird news that we're going to talk about. A main baseball team is hitting the Guinness World Record because of the biggest whoopee. <laughs> Making whoopee is what they used to say in the 70s, but that's not the same thing. It's a whoopee pie. No, not that kind of whoopee pie, guys. But anyway, we'll talk about that. Plus, this morning, we'll dive into some other strange and unusual news for you, the odd news uh, that's going to get you going, what? Huh? Did you say that? Why do you say that? California resident shares video of a bear. Eh, another Yogi, this time taking a trash can lid off like a human. Hey, boo-boo, let's get this. Plus, we'll talk about a few other strange and unusual things this weird Wednesday. We're going to get weird with you. we got our headline news throughout the morning, our daily devotion. We'll get you kicked off here in just a few moments with what's going on around the state and around the United States and around the world. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe on the YouTube page. And uh, we'll get you prepared for AEW Dynamite tonight as we're a couple of weeks away from uh, WrestleMania next weekend. So, of course, next Friday, I'm going to have my WrestleMania show. It's only going to be the last hour, I believe, but it's going to be my WrestleMania show. We're going to preview WrestleMania uh, in the final period next Friday. Not this Friday, but next Friday. So if you're a big wrestling fan, you might want to tune in for that one. I'm going to be diving deeper into it. Maybe get some experts on here talking about it. Oh, yeah. Like, share, and subscribe. It's a weird Wednesday, and I've got my poll question up. I want you guys to go ahead. It's just coming up. Just people are starting to come on. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? Was it the D.B. Cooper disappearance where this man took over a flight, had money, jumped out of the flight over Seattle, Washington with a lot of money and disappeared? and was never heard from again. Was it JFK shooting? There's all kinds of theories behind that. And I'm not gonna say conspiracy theories because it used to be cool to be conspiracy theory, but in 2024, that you're a lunatic. Back then, theories that the president was shot and killed by mob or members of Congress or even members of the government. JFK shooting. Betty and Barney abduction, the, the couple that was coming back from their Niagara Falls uh, I would say Niagara Falls honeymoon and was supposedly abducted by the unknown from outer space. Or Stonehenge, how was it created? Those are the, those are which of these historic events was most strange and weird to you? Uh, good morning from Pete to the Navajo Nation. Just want to get that out there too. I wonder why so many people are worried about the solar eclipse. Um, well, I don't know. Well, I, here's the thing. Because they don't have God in their heart. I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, Sweet Leaf and everybody saying good morning to you, Pete. Well, I didn't want to have to do this, but th- thank you, Pete, for bringing it up. This is my brother, Pete. This is what I love about him. <laughs> um, well, I was going to try to Ignore it, but I guess God's like, hey, Ryan, you're going to have to say this. Yeah. People are not going to like it. 18 minutes past the hour. I tell you what, let me tell you what's going on with the traffic in the area. 
And I'll answer your question right after this. I have something for you. But please go to our poll question there and tell us which one. Right now, Stonehenge has got 100%, but it's just started. We'll see how many people. Uh, now, I actually take that back. 67% of you think Stonehenge is uh, the which of these historic events was the most strange and weird. D.B. Cooper disappearance at 33%. JFK shooting and Betty and Barney abduction at 0% so far. Let's take a look at traffic right quick. Brought to you by Killingsworth Realty Rover Report. And I'll get to your question after this. Let's take a look at traffic right quick in the Atlanta metro Atlanta area. Travel advisory in downtown Atlanta crash in multiple areas and multiple left lane areas, i.e. I-75, 85, uh, I-20, exit 247, U.S. Highway 29 is an alternate route on Moreland Avenue there. That's up to about 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Travel advisory in West Atlanta as well on Holmes Drive. That's exit 52. There's a car on fire in the three light rain in the third right lane. Use exit 78 there, please. Also, incident in Conyers and crash at I-20, exit 80 in West West Avenue. Uh, use Iris Drive or Green Street. No, Nothing going on here in the metro Atlanta area, Noonan. Bulls World looking good as well as Lower Fatville Road and Popular Road. Temple Avenue picking up, but not bad, as well as Jackson Street picking up, going towards LaGrange Street. Heading down towards uh, Greenville Street, taking you down Interstate 85 southbound, no issues in Hogansville, Grantville, or even Luthersville. In LaGrange, nothing this morning to report. Uh, Commerce Avenue as well as New Franklin Road looking good heading into downtown LaGrange. Continue on the Interstate 85. Uh, get off at uh, Kia Boulevard. Or if you get off at the West Point exit, take that right. There's construction going on, but you still have a few months of that. But you also, you're still able to get through there. Take a left. You can get all gassed up at the Loves. And, of course, you can gas yourself up with a Hardy's Biscuit. Head on down to exit 79. It's shut down for a couple of more months. Um, exit 70, that's 79 in East Alabama between Valley and Lynette. You go on down to the exit 77. That's the best route to get off in Valley and Lynette exit. Could, could, could City, Alabama, a little further down, and Auburn, Opelika, all looking good. That's your traffic brought to you by Killingsworth Realty and the Road Report. All right. Let me update the poll as it's coming in. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird since? It is Weird Wednesday. D.B. Cooper disappearance is getting 20% of the vote. The JFK shooting, nobody's voted on that yet. 20% of the votes going to Betty and Barney induction, the couple that was coming back from their Niagara Falls honeymoon and supposedly was abducted by the, the outer space aliens or aliens from outer space. And Stonehenge is getting 60% of the vote. So 20% for Betty and Barney, 60% for Stonehenge. Mm. Hot butter biscuits with a uh, hunt biscuits with honey. Mm. I like to, I like them with the the hot butter butter biscuits. Sometimes just that. All right, let's get into it. Uh, Twenty two minutes past the hour. We're currently holding at fifty three degrees. Your type of temperature brought to you by Active Pest Control. Summer, winter, spring, fall. We don't care for those rodents, critters, or gooey things. All Michael the Group can exterminate and lay the smack down for you. We got a brand new. Two brand new clients coming to the station. Southern States Bank is joining us in April. They're going to be with us all the way through the summer and everything. And remember FDIC. And also we have now a brand new suites here in the area. Yes. Uh, we'll talk more about them as they're going to be joining us live on the show at mid-April. What, what? Yes, you heard me right. You heard me right. We're going to have somebody join us in mid-April, uh, an event coming up on the 18th of April with a brand new groundbreaking of suites that you could probably stay in longer than just, you know, one night. Or you can do one night. You just never know. Everhome Suites Grand Opening, and we're going to have Emily. Uh, Emily's going to join us from Ever Suites Grand Opening on that Tuesday. 
she, em, Emily Crawford will join us. She's a representative with Everhome Suites Grand Opening, and they're going to be joining us here on the show as well. All right. Oh, it's changing up a little bit here. Thank goodness. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? D.B. Cooper's disappearance. The man that jumped out of the plane over Seattle and took a lot of money and never appeared once again. 14% of the votes. JFK shooting. We know about this historic event. Uh, some feel like the mob or even the government took the former president out or uh, in Dallas. 29% of the votes. 14% of the votes also going to Betty and Barney abduction. The couple that was coming back from their honeymoon from Niagara Falls and they were abducted by outer space. Those from outer space, from the great beyond. And Stonehenge, they got 14%. And Stonehenge has got 43% of the votes so far. How were they made is what many have asked for years. All right. Uh, to answer my friend's question, Pete, I wonder why so many people are worried about the solar eclipse on April 8th. I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you I'm not worried. Because if you are believing that this is a if, if, if you are a follower of Jesus Christ and you believe this event is going to happen, you're at peace right now. Or you believe either it's not, either it's going to happen or not going to happen. If you believe Jesus is coming back, you're going to be at peace. If you're worried about it, obviously you better get yourself straight today. Ask God for your forgiveness. And I feel like so many people are worried about it because that we it's like I said, you got uneducated people getting on the internet, and of course, they're like, oh, 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 well, they should stop it or not stop it or whatever. Well, YouTube and Facebook are not going to stop anything unless it gets out of hand. I mean, the Nazi crap, the racist crap, the sexual crap, the the bull crap, all the all that stuff is uh, is looked at because even under broadcast radio where I'm at. It's not, it's looked down upon and people are fine big time for stuff. It's not called opinions. Now there's people with a lot of uneducated opinions out there that are getting on the internet, spreading lies and gossip. I don't care if they're reading the Bible. Even the devil knows the Bible probably better than most of us because he was up there in heaven. He was kicked out of heaven. Okay. He knows, he knows what's going on pretty well. Even he, even the devil can read the Bible. And no, when I'm talking about local yokel people out here or anything like that, but I'm just saying the devil's within the person. And if, if they know, you think they know the Bible and they're sitting there predicting the end times, why some people are alternating Bibles and selling them, which is very blasphemous. And I don't care if you like persons or not, like people or not, I don't care. It's blasphemy. But we're not going to get into that. But here's the thing. To answer your question, Pete, these people ha don't have the love of Jesus Christ in their heart. They blame church. They blame other people. They wake up every morning with hate in their heart for somebody that's different than them. When the Bible tells us we're supposed to pray for our brothers and sisters, they do not, they do not follow the Ten Commandments that are still our rules, no matter whether you're saved by the blood of Jesus Christ or not. People that are waking up worried about this every morning, they don't have Jesus for real. Anymore. And it's not, I'm not being mean. I'm not being mean. I'm not trying to hurt somebody. I wasn't even going to talk about this. I, I woke up this morning with this on my heart, but I wasn't going to talk about it because I'm like, I don't want to get into this, but I'm glad you asked that question, Pete, because it led me into being able to answer it for you. But if they are worried, and you know, those people that are worried, you need to tell them, hey, they need to pray to God. Because look, it's already been proven that not every single town with a biblical name is in the line of this solar eclipse. Okay. One or two or three are, but not every one of them. Okay. So people try to put that together and say it's the end of times and da 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 da. You know, right now, to be honest with you, if it was or it wasn't for me, I'm going to be honest with you. For me, I'm comfortable with it. Good morning, creepy confidential. So I, I'm, I'm good with that, uh, Pete. I'm glad you asked that question. I'm good with that. So the people that are kind of scared about that, 
and believing the false information that is being put all over the internet. This is why I'm glad that radio broadcasting and television broadcasting and FCC are finally getting back to take over the internet and everything like with me, because all these false information that's out there to scaring people over something that happens every once in a blue moon. So. Same. I know where I'm going. Amen, sister. So you don't, you're not scared about it. That's what I'm saying. If it's whether it happens or don't happen or in the way people were saying, if you're not, if, if you're, if you know where you're going, you're good. You're not, you're not worried about it. You're just like, it's just going to be another solar eclipse. And if things happen, things happen. I saw one guy actually say that it had nothing to do with one preacher actually say it had nothing to do with any of that. That he says, it's not going to destroy the world that day. <laughs> he said, it, it's going to make you rethink things. And he come up with a different idea. And I was like, well, you know, at least he's not trying to send panic out to people. But uh, that's the thing, Pete. That's why so many people are worried about it, because those people don't know where they're going. They do not know where they're going. And a lot of that has to do with hate against other people, man. And I've never been taught. I, I, I was taught that we have to love people that are different from us and everything. And, and the way to lead people to, to Jesus. And I know it's getting a little Christian, a little religion, but I'm sorry. But it was a question asked by a listener. I'm, I'll always answer my listener's question. Uh, especially one like that when it was on my heart this morning work and I'm like I don't want to talk about this this morning <laughs> but that's what it is so if 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 they are feeling that way they need to get their cells straight but they're not going to get their cells straight they're going to blame everybody the government like they're important that the government's coming after them we're not JFK okay I tell you none of us are JFK he was important enough to be shot we're not so. <laughs> All right, in my burning question this morning, since it's Weird Wednesday and Brenda Gasky joins us in the final period, we're going to do a little, What is which of these historic events was the most strange and weird, ladies and gentlemen? Was it the D.B. Cooper disappearance where the man got on the plane and nobody knew who he was? He was just the passenger alone is D.B. Cooper. He takes the plane over, jumps off the plane over Seattle, Washington with a lot of money and no one even knows where he appeared. 14% of you believe that was a strange and weird time, weird event. Also, JFK shootings getting 29%. We know JFK was shot in Dallas, Texas when he was visiting. Many people have theories behind that it could be the government or the mob or something else. 14% of you are saying the Betty and Barney abduction. For those of you who don't know, Betty and Barney was a couple coming from Niagara Falls off there, there in, in the early 40s or 50s where they were having themselves there coming from their honeymoon. And one night out of the blue, there was a light in the sky. 14% of you, there was an abduction. And then 43% of you believe Stonehenge is actually which of the most historic, the most strange and weird. Wow. We still know how that, that, that was created. So there you go. I like these. I like I like this. It came to me this morning right before it came on air. I was like, it's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good question. I like it. Uh, I do a different question every day, different things from sports to current events to to movies to true crime and everything. We're going to have those poll questions. And those poll questions help me out a lot. So even when I have 11 to 12 people up or go down to low people, it still helps out my feed. So so why am I putting them up? I, I got that there. All right, when we come back from break, we're going to head into some of the headline news this morning. Uh, we're going to tell you, coming up in mid-April, about April 16th, Elizabeth Crawford from Everhome Suites, Grand Everhome Suites is going to have, they got a grand opening coming up on the 18th of that month, and you, yours truly, will have Emily on the show, and Everhome Suites 
a brand new facility being built here, the second of its kind in the United States being built in the Manhattan area of Noonan. We're going to have her on the show, and they're going to be a part of the Rhino Radio Penitentiary as a supporter of the show, as well as a supporter of the local station, WQBE. Also, we want to say good morning to our friends, Southern States Bank, starting with us next Monday, taking us through all the way for the next, yeah, a brand new sponsor. Big sponsors coming on. And hopefully you guys, if you know someone who wants to sponsor a show or be a part of the station and have their own show to get it on here, give us a call at 770-347-9947. The more live and local stuff with our name in it, the better it is for all of us. When we come back, we got some news for you. It's still this morning, strange and unusual news. A California bear actually, hey, dude, maybe it's, hey, hey, boo-boo, hey, boo-boo, let's go get this trash again. We'll talk about that this morning. Plus, a Maine baseball team is making whoopee pies, that is. And we'll get you some other strange and unusual news. Answer our poll question. We'll be back in a moment putting you in the penalty box for safekeeping. Yes, Brenda, I can't wait for her to be with us this morning. for you as well got some sports and all kind of news mixed in we'll get into that in just a few Tell you what she's talking about, you have to stay tuned. to you. Answer our poll question. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? D.B. Cooper? Disappearance, JFK shooting, Betty and Barney abduction, or Stonehenge? You voted uh, Betty and Barney. I would not expect any, I wouldn't expect anything less from you, creepy confidential. <laughs> I expected that one or either the D.B. Cooper disappearance. It was one of those two I expected from you. 
All four. I can't. I don't. I, I'll be honest with you, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I can't pick either one of them. They're all for me. They're all cool for me. Glenn Danzen from the Misfits. And Texas is why the president is dead. Ah, there you go. Thank you, Jacksonville kid. Awesome. I am saved by the bell. Are you saved by the bell? Yes, welcome back into this penalty box. What's up, Jacksonville kid? I love it. Glenn Danson from the Misfits said Texas was why the president is dead. Hey, Glenn's an intelligent guy. Uh, he, he has his opinions, and I'm not going to disagree with him. <laughs> you see, even at his age, he's still a big guy. Pete says, Stonehenge for him, Creepy Confidential picked uh, Betty and Barney, and, of course, he said her second, of course, would have been D.B. Cooper's disappearance. I didn't expect anything less, like I said. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we've got our events there going on. Red Cow Conspiracy. <laughs> I don't know anything about a Red Cow Conspiracy. I don't get into conspiracy theories. We don't do all the conspiracy theories. The old conspiracy theories were cool until we got lunatics today believing that the end of the world's coming because of the eclipse or, uh, or lizard people running the capital. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, I don't get into that. We get into what's historic events that's really strange and unusual, and you got to try to figure out how did that happen? And that's why I put those events up. Since we got horrifying histories, Brenda Gasky showing up later on this morning. Which of these historic events is our poll question this morning? Is strange is the most strange and weird. These are people is hilarious. I know, right? Give me some flies. <laughs> Which of these events? DB Cooper's parents got twenty three percent. This is a man that hijacked a plane, had a lot of money, jumped out over Seattle, boom, disappeared off the grid. I think he's a military man, personally. I watched the uh, documentary on Netflix about him. JFK shooting, 31% of you get, get given that. I've uh, been always strange about whether the government or the mob did that or, you know, of course, by saying they think Texas did it, could be. Betty and Barney abduction, a couple that was in the 1940s, 50s, coming back from Niagara Falls for their honeymoon. 15% of you guys say that. Uh, JFK, 31%, once again. Uh, and the abduction that, that supposedly they were abducted by those from the great beyond. And finally, Stonehenge, 31% of you. We've always studied this in history. Those who remember history back when history was history. <laughs> Um, always the question was, how did it get there? So there you go. Pete says, strange water ghost in Lutherville. That was, that's probably a moonshiner trying to scare everybody out of the woods. <laughs> we got to keep these people out of the woods so we can continue making money on our moonshine. We're going to make up, we're going to say the water ghost. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Pete. I'm just kidding. I don't know. That's the first time I heard about that. Somebody's got to tell me about it. There you go. All right, let's jump into some news. 20 minutes away from the top of the hour. Just picking with you there, buddy. <laughs> Look, I think sometimes moonshiners out in the woods do make up a lot of stuff to get people, <laughs> keep them out of the woods. I mean, you don't want the revenue man coming and arresting you when you make it moonshine up in the mountains, do you? Or out in the woods. We need to we need to scare people off. Junior, Junior, did you get that bear and shave it and make it look like it's uh, and repaint it and make it look like a <laughs> little boy died in a fishing pond behind the house? Oh wow! Sorry to hear that. Whew. Hmm. Well, is it the family still live there? At, at that location, Pete. I gotta learn, learn more about that. Wow, seems like a, a story I'd want to hear more about. All right, 
We'll get into some of the strange and unknown this morning here in just a few before we talk to Brenda Gasky at Horrifying History 101. But first, Southern Gaza Hospital shutters following the Israel siege. We'll get you some stuff in Israel right quick news, and then we got you some dirty bird news I want to do, football news. Uh, the Palestinian Red uh, Society said Southern Gaza's uh, hospital has been shuttered following weeks of being under siege by forces in Israel. The Palestinian organization did say in a statement as of yesterday that the medical facilities in Khan uh, has been taken out of the service and has stopped working completely after occupied forces forced the hospital crews, crews and the wounded to leave, evacuate, gone. Uh, and in, in and everything. So we'll give you abreast of what's going on with that. And another statement, the hospital has been sieged for more than 40 days and has shelled several times for the occupant, occupants and the forces came in and sieged it once again over and over and forced everyone out. This war has been going on and on since October 7th, 2023, when a mosque attacked and a fair or festival and killing and kidnapping a number of young people. All right, young people can't let them do that. Oh, wow. At least 60 terrorist targets have been... Uh, IDF said that they hit at least 60 terrorist targets, killing a number of Hamas fire, fighters in the target in and around that same hospital in the north of Gaza. That's what they placed on X. All right, we're going to talk about... Money, 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 money. 15 minutes away from the top of the hour, 53 degrees, under cloudy skies, top of temperature brought to you by Act of Pest Control, summer, winter, spring, fall. We don't care for those rodents, quitters, or gooey things at all. We're going to talk about Krispy Kreme, also partnering up with McDonald's. This is going to be tasty. But first, Powerball, you and I are not going to get it. Some imaginary person did. Guys, if you're going to come up with conspiracy theories, why not come up with a conspiracy theory about uh, the Powerball? <laughs> Nobody's ever going to get it. Powerball jackpot rises to $856 million after no winner in Monday's drawing. That's right, $856 billion. Yesterday's drawing, somebody got something in the uh, Mega Millions, but you still got a chance today to go buy that ticket, spend all that money, Maybe spend five dollars and get you about, uh, or six dollars and get you three tickets. And guess what? Because I think they're two dollars a piece or something like that here in Georgia. And then maybe you'll win eight hundred fifty-six million. If not, you know the lottery's got your money. <laughs> wow! Can you believe that? Wow! So there you go. And I want to talk about this right quick before we do sports news update within this segment. Uh, Krispy Kreme is partnering up with McDonald's. He said the family is gone. Wow. Where there was a full moon, you can see it back in the 20s. Whoa. I got to go visit that, Pete. Oh, I need to tell Sally Tool to go visit it. Yeah. She'll be on with us next Thursday. Yeah, make sure you remind me. Krispy Kreme announced Tuesday that it's going to partner with McDonald's selling its fresh donuts daily. Eventually, around the country, you're going to be able to walk in and get you a Big Mac and a Krispy Kreme donut, a quarter pounder meal, and a Krispy Kreme donut. What? Forget just the apple pies, baby. You're going to have Krispy Kreme donuts. We really got to get fat now. Fat. Ask her about the Bell Rock. I bet she does know about that. The new partnership is set to roll out later this year with a nationwide, the nationwide availability being expected by everybody by 2026. You're going to get fatter. The move will allow Krispy Kreme to add more donuts, not just in your local grocery store, but in your local McDonald's. And where their donuts are currently served, and, of course, the rollout follows early testing in 160 McDonald's restaurants. Hope we do it in one restaurant in Noonan. <laughs> yes, she does know about that, the Bell Rocking. I think we talked about that one time last year when she first came on. That's why I think I remember that. 
Uh, the rollout will begin in Louisville, Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky. Hopefully it comes down to Georgia. And currently these pilot restaurants are the only McDonald's location serving Krispy Kreme right now. Got to go through Louisville, Kentucky to get them. What? McDonald's U.S. Chief Marketing and Customer Expert Officer said that the partnership is an exciting new step in this journey and a chance to unlock new business opportunities in the breakfast category. Get yourself a sausage biscuit and a Krispy Kreme donut and get you a Krispy Kreme donut with some of that coffee. Ooh-wee. Oh, I know a witch over in Moreland. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. In the witch of Moreland. Krispy Kreme donut. Uh, to celebrate, Krispy Kreme is giving away an original glazed donut to, actually, that was yesterday they gave it away. Dad, go. It always comes in late for me. I think I, I have heard about the witch of, that was a story I think we talked about on, with, was probably Sally a few months back. <laughs> she brought in on different historic views there. She travels around. I'll ask her about it. What was I saying? Oh, yeah, Krispy Kreme. Mm. Ten minutes away from the top of the hour. Let's do let's do some dirty bird news for you. Tina the bird, bird, bird. Tina the bird, bird, bird. Yeah, it's the Falcons news time. Time to kick off some sports before we take our break. The bird is the word. The bird, the bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. Peter Griffin. Bird, bird, the bird is the word. Doing the noon and dance. Yeah, the bird, bird, bird. The bird is the word. You know what the, what the word is? It's the bird is the word. <laughs> All right, let's jump into it right quick, ladies and gentlemen. Falcons signed, uh, Devon, uh, signed six round draft pick from 2018 to make his seventh season in the NFL with veteran receiver and returner. Ray Ray McLeod joins our team. Uh, Kirk Cousins is tampering case. The Falcons say, look, they didn't break any rules during the time getting him, according to Arthur Blank, the owner. Falcons signed defensive lineman Contavia Street. Street. Uh, he joined the Falcons in October of 2023, and now he's heading over to the Philadelphia Eagles, I think, with a trade via trade. The Falcons have now brought back two offensive linemen, who are going to be a part of the free agency. And one of them includes Storm Norton is back with the Atlanta, the Atlanta Falcons. Speaking of dirty bird news, the Atlanta Hawks on Monday completed one of the biggest comebacks in franchise history by a 30 point deficit. They come from behind in the last quarter and defeat the Boston Celtics. Ha! That's what happens. Braves country radio tomorrow. Have the Braves and the Phillies right on Thursday. They presented at 3.05, 3 o'clock. They're going to keep, they're going to have a pregame right on the network. Join Matt McGee and the armchair quarterbacks. That's it. There you go. About the word. What the word is, is the bird. We're going to take a break and come back here and close out this one. The witch of Moreland, she was waiting for her son to come home from the Civil War. Oh, man. Now, I'm definitely going to ask her about that, too. Big Civil War buff, I'm into that, too. Back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen, more Weird Wednesday after this.
We also bring music and art therapy. Please visit our website at www.familypatternsmatter.org. Shopping for insurance doesn't have to be stressful. I'm Christy, owner of Ellsworth Insurance, located here in Newton, Georgia. We're an independent agency with access to multiple carriers for home, auto, life, health, and commercial insurance. We're your one-stop shop for your insurance needs. www.insurewithellsworth.com, 770-755-7053. We look forward to meeting you soon. I am Apostle Deborah Harris, Pastor Apostle of Kingdom Connected Ministries International at 121. We're going to close out the show this hour next. Connecting the kingdom. Connecting kingdom citizens, kingdom businesses, and advancing the kingdom of God in this hour. Join what is going on? Tuesday at 10 o'clock a.m. with guests who are sharing their faith, business, and ministry. Family fun is back on there. Primetime Carnival in Georgia Communications presents the Lynette Spring Carnival. April 2nd through the 7th. Live, fun, food, games, more. Open night at 6 p.m. 2 p.m. for weekends. The next Spring Carnival. Highway 29, Old Mill Parking Lot in Lynette, Alabama. April 2nd through the 7th. Family fun for you and me. Be there. Well, if you're not there, then you're not going to be anywhere because it's coming up next week, beginning. Yeah, we'll have that for you and everything. Go to Let's Go Family. Go to go to go to it, and you can get tickets available there. Yep, we're presenting it for you once again. We did it like we did it a couple of weeks ago in Lagrange. Now we're in Lynette, Alabama. We're bringing you all kind of family fun. All right, let's take a look at today's daily devotion sponsored by Noonan City Church. 17 First Avenue here in the Metro Atlanta area of Noonan. This coming up Sunday morning, we've got 8 a.m. services, uh, 9.30 a.m. services, 11 a.m. services, and e and more evening services as well. So we're going to have like three services, four services in the day, and then we're going to come back and have an evening service as well. It's our It's our Resurrection Sunday services. Pastor Jimmy Ellison and staff invite you out. Transforming lives for Jesus' sake. So there you go. They want you to come to the early service if you're a standard member, if it works for your family. All right. Anyway, today's daily devotion from Jesus Listens is brought to you by Sarah Young, and she's the author of Jesus Calling, coming from Romans 8.25, John 17.22, and Hebrews 11.11. That, I saw 11. I mean, Hebrews 11.1. 1, I'm sorry. Hebrews 11.1. 1. I saw 11.1 1 today. I knew this was going to come up. Gracious Lord, help me to hope for what I do not see, eagerly waiting for it. Among five senses, sight is the one I value the most. You create the world's glorious, glorious, most beautiful and delightful scenes. However, I realize that hope, which is itself a kind of vision, is more wonderful than sight. Help enables me to see through the eyes of my heart things that are not yet. Oh, the most stunning example of this is the hope of heaven. Your word tells me that my ultimate decision is to share you, your glory, God. I can trust in the magnificent promise because it's based on your finished work on the cross and your mysterious resurrection. I need to practice hoping for things that I don't see both in life and in next. Because teach me waiting eagerly for your presence with my focus primary on you is a long outcome and a perfect one. Ooh Needed that to end the hour when we started the hour with that burning question, why so many people were afraid of this eclipse? Because if you're a believer, you wouldn't be afraid if you thought the end times were coming. You'd be relieved. If you if you know that you our days are coming to an end or things are coming in and you may not make it there because you're not following the Ten Commandments and following God and do it in his presence. And you kind of have this, you know, hate for everybody. <laughs> That's why they're worried. Yeah. All right. Talking more strange, unusual things coming up next hour. Headline news. And we'll get ready to get into the final period. Class will be in session with Horrifying History 101 in the final period with Brenda Gasky. Stay with us.
And our poll question is up. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? The D.B. Cooper disappearance. 23% of you believe so. JFK shooting with 31% of you believe in that. The Betty and Barney abduction with 15%. And Stonehenge at 31% of the votes. Guys, vote in our poll question this morning. It's our Weird Wednesday poll question. Back in a moment. <laughs> Answer our poll question. Jordan Montgomery to a one year deal for 25 million bucks. That's sports. Rod DeMoss, NBC News Radio. WQE, 99.1 FM, the key. Noonan, Shepard, Franklin, LaGrange. NBC News Radio, I'm Michael Kastner. The search for the six missing Baltimore Bridge workers was suspended Tuesday night because of diminished visibility and treacherous currents in the busy harbor. Divers will return to Baltimore Harbor this morning to look for the people presumed dead after a cargo ship hit the bridge. Maryland Governor Wes Moore. To the victims of this tragedy and their loved ones. All our hearts are broken. We feel your loss. We're thinking of you. And we will always be thinking of you. Trade experts fear the Baltimore Bridge collapse could disrupt global supply chains. Mark Binkley reports. Last year, over 47 billion tons of foreign cargo passed through Baltimore Harbor. Officials on Tuesday said maritime traffic through the port is being suspended until further notice after a loaded cargo ship plowed into a bridge crossing the harbor. The head of the Institute of Export and International Trade said the suspension could have a significant ripple effect on global supply chains. He told the BBC that over 750,000 vehicles moved through Baltimore last year, noting that Baltimore is also a major exporter of liquefied natural gas for Europe. A winning Mega Millions ticket was sold in New Jersey, matched all six numbers in Tuesday night's drawing, and it's worth over $1.1 billion. NBC News is planning to drop former RNC chair Ronna McDaniel after facing pushback from some of its personalities over her hiring. During her time with the RNC, McDaniel questioned the 2020 presidential election results. I want my prepaid debit card.
ready to come back so let's hope everybody's coming back on we got a few people on but i see more than what they're saying on there on my end oh ryan you hurt somebody's feelings by telling them the truth Me. Yes, here we go. Good morning. Here we go. We're getting ready to go on Wednesday. Are not the views. Nope. Here we go. Okay, Joe. Yes, sir. Good morning. Thanks, Cleveland. Peter, take it. Oh, quag. Okay, he said, we're doing a joke, stop it. <laughs> we were still going, Stewie. We were definitely still going because this second period of nonstop play of sports, entertainment, and more on this weird Wednesday, your favorite radio show got you in lockdown, the penitentiary. Well, some people might really need to be in a real penitentiary, but they don't believe it because they think they're the normal ones. <laughs> we got a lot of stuff to talk about this hour. Let's kick it off. It's Rhino Radio Penitentiary. I'm your host of the most, the one, the only, Ryan O'Neill. And of course... Oh, you know I am the game. You know, you know, and I'm 50,000 plus of you tell us that all the time on the Shoutcast Saturday Out Loud across the Rhino Radio Media page. Earth Rock Radio, New Mexico, Arizona, the Navajo Nation. We're across the British Columbia Isles of Canada, eh? And finally, across the Jordan Communication of Family Radio Stations in East Alabama, West Georgia, including right here at Atlanta and Metro Atlanta's very own 99.1 FM WQEE, home of news. Inspirational talk and Southern sports. Atlanta's only real talk station telling it like it is. 
And this is the Rhino Radio Penitentiary. You're on lockdown with a straight edge, independent skeptic, telling you the truth, telling you what you, telling you the truth, tell me when I'm telling lies, you can. And two, my haters, I got this to say to you. Listen up. That's right. I'm the man around here. I don't really care about what the haters think and everything. Yeah, whatever. They're a bunch of jerboneys. I come from a generation where I looked up to D-Generation X, NWO, listened to Metallica, Misfits, and, and Metal and Punk Rock. So you think that anything really offends me? No. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to get out here and cry. <laughs> it's Weird Wednesday. You know of two indie... Indy, Indy in Barrel Grounds, Indian Barrel Grounds, one beside old East, East Coweta High School, and the second is a house that sits on the sits sit on the ground that the house land that the house land has some bad injury. I knew of that one time too. And I feel like that that's true. If you have a house on Native American land, there's gonna be some bad energy there. So we think it's true. Bob, they're all saying true. Yeah. Well, on a burial ground. Can't tell. You can't, can't tell some of these people anything like that, uh, Tim. <clears throat> they, some of them quit school when they were 16 and th think, thinks that the government history that they're learning today is coming from the conspiracy theorists online. <laughs> I'm going to support them and, and buy some pills from them. So like, blue pill from them. So I can make my wife happy while I'm asleep and she make with her boot, make it out with a bull boy. <laughs> so uh, uh, Tim says, I don't laugh out loud. So yeah, I, they agree with you there. They agree with you. Uh, Pete, I've always heard that as well. All right, coming on, stay with us. If you're coming on because you're mad because I'm making fun of you, hey, you know, then the haters really cry. The haters are the ones that cry. The haters are the ones that call everybody else the carrots and the chads. <laughs> Have you noticed that? The ones that really get really, I can sit here and make fun of a lot of people and people laugh about it. But I make fun of a certain person. They got to go, they want to go to war with you. <laughs> I've been, I've been to the school and into the house. Cool, Pete. We got to make a trip out there with you one day. Anyway, let's see what's going on. This hour, we got some strange and unusual news. The bear went over the mountain and saw what he could see. He opened the trash can and he says, the bear opened the trash can in California. Hey, boo-boo, let's get some snacks out of the, uh, not just the picnic back, but the nuts are right. So again, we'll talk about that. Plus, we'll get some other strange and unusual news that's going to fit this hour. Yeah. We got some stuff that's going to fit this hour because we're heading into horrifying history in the final, in the final, in the final hour today. Horrifying history is going to be with us this morning. Brenda Gasky, the host and CEO of that particular podcast. We'll talk with her later on. She's got a great story for us this morning. Ah, we got all that coming up for you. People died in the house. Woo! Well, I've got my uh, poll question up, and this one's been the coolest one yet so far. We'll have a true crime one tomorrow for you because it's True Crime Thursday. We'll always have some sports, true crime, culture, uh, movies, whatever, uh, pop culture, and more. At the house, you can find some arrowheads everywhere. Sweetleaf says, don't mess with the arrowheads. It's bad juju. Hmm? I'm not going to mess with them now. <laughs> I want to pick them up. Thank you for warning me. <laughs> They'll be like, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. With these historic events was the most strange and weird, ladies and gentlemen. The D.B. Cooper experience of the, of the passenger that nobody knew his real name that hijacked a plane and jumped out. Over Seattle and disappeared and was never heard from again. JFK shooting, where the former president, well, not the former president, but the president of the United States at the time was in Dallas, Texas, and he was shot by Lee Harvey 
Harvey Oswell, supposedly by Oswell, many theorists, not conspiracy theorists, because those are lunatics, many theorists think that, uh, and, and reporters think that it could have possibly been the government or the mob. Uh, the Betty and Barney abduction, where the couple was coming back from their falls on their their uh, vacation and um, honeymoon, and one night, out of the blue, the skies lit up and they were abducted. Or the Stonehenge, which has been an unusual situation. Stonehenge is getting 20% of the votes. Betty and Barney is getting 14% of the votes. 29% going to JK shooting and 29% of you saying D.B. Cooper's disappearance. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? Guys, thank you for voting this morning. This one's going quick. This one's one that I like because all of them are getting a little love this morning compared to a lot of the ones where I only get one or two to get the top love. But uh, this one right here, every one of them's getting a little love. Thank God. All right, let's jump into it. Headline news for this hour right quick and everything. All right, Powerball jackpot rises to $856 million today with no winners on Monday. The Israel Defense Force strikes dozens of terror targets in Khan and raids a hospital. Visa, MasterCard, low sweet fees in settlement with merchants. And as cancer treatments continue for King George III, he will attend the Easter services this weekend for Resurrection Sunday. Krispy Kreme announced that on Tuesday they're going to partner with McDonald's by 2016. They're going to start later this year. By 2016, all McDonald's across the country and the world are going to have a choice of bringing in Krispy Kreme donuts. Woo! Get that jelly-filled donut with you. Big Mac, baby. Or I like to get a jelly-filled donut with my two cheeseburger meal or my quarter pounder meal. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 you heard me. I'm going to get fat. Uh, you just got to have more and more fat, baby. More and more fat. You're going to spend $300 for it, though. <laughs> and then I'm going to complain that those poor people working for a living to take care of the kids shouldn't get paid. <laughs> because you know why? I quit school when I was 16 and was making $15 then. Yeah. No, actually, I didn't. Oh, I went all the way to college. But I'm just kind of making fun of the people that. Think like that. All right, let's get into some serious news, too, this morning. One we talked about yesterday, continue to move forward with this update. Six missing construction workers are presumed dead as the Coast Guard announced this Tuesday evening it was calling off a search and turning to the recovery uh, of the collapse of the Francis Key, Francis Scott Key Bridge in Baltimore. At this point, we do not believe we're going to find any of these individuals still alive, says a, uh, a, a representative uh, telling reporters, confirming that the length of time the workers have been missing combined with the cold temperatures in the water made rescue unlikely. Wow. Mm. Got a picture of it with the bridge. Wow. The six workers were filling potholes on the bridge early Tuesday morning when a Singapore-based cargo ship issued a mayday with a report saying the vessel had lost power. The ship crashed into the support column of the bridge, sent a large part of the span and eight workers into the water below. Ooh. Wow. And as my computer freezes up, I'm going to shoot at a bird. Christian of you, right? It's not good of why for not spending money. Except for they were liars. We're not liars. <laughs> they lie, we lie. Lie, if it's one lie plus another lie equals truth. <laughs> anyway, there, that's it. That's it. That's all I'm going to say about it because my computer wanted to freeze up. I don't understand this. I don't comprehend I got an updated computer, did all the updates on it. It's all perfect. It was working all day yesterday. All of a sudden, it wants to mess up. Some people call it gremlins. I call it Satan out there trying to get into me because I'm trying to hear present real truths instead of somebody going out here going, let's talk conspiracy nut theories. 
<laughs> oh man. Uh, BK, what's up? BK on the air. He's with us. Greetings from BK on the air. The National Transportation Safety Board arrived on the scene at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Updated reporters on the investigation into the crash and collapse of the bridge. They called it an accident and said it was still too early to confirm reports whether it was done on purpose or not. Wow. Some people feel like it was. I don't feel like it had anything to do with anything that's going on. Uh, we need to we need to not politicize this or make it a political movement or whatever. We need to kind of look into what it is. It was an accident. It crashed. People died. Six people died. Two people were rescued. It's a it's a horrific accident that happened. You know what I'm saying? Horrific accident. And uh, I'm just going to say prayers for these people's families and everything. Just think hardworking people getting up early in the morning because that's the time they can work. They probably were up half the night, started about, let's just say they were probably going to start about midnight to work all night long. Because I know they did those kind of bridges when I lived in uh, uh, Pensacola, Florida, Gulf Breeze, Florida. It was really, 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 they start about 10 o'clock at night and go all night long to make sure everything was updated, safety for people, because the majority of the people were not traveling at night. Majority of the people were not traveling at night. If you had to, coming home from somewhere or whatever, you know, they were work, still working on it, safety of the bridge, same way these men were doing it. So, mm. so they're going to search and rescue. Uh, the president, Joe Biden, has a also addressed the bridge collapse early yesterday and promised that all federal resources to rebuild the span will continue. He said, my transportation secretary is there now. I've directed my team to move heaven and earth to reopen the port and rebuild the bridge as soon as humanly possible. Mayor Governor Wes Moore, who has declared a state of emergency, told reporters that the 47-year-old bridge was up to code and that its collapse shocked and heartbreak. Was shocked, shocking and heartbreaking, I'm sorry and that the workers, the crew, were heroes. And working on the bridge at the time of the collapse, heroes from warning drivers away from the bridge. Wow. More people could have died. And that's true. Sad situation. We had to keep you updated, ladies and gentlemen. It's an important situation to keep you guys updated on the real news of the day. All right, ladies and gentlemen. We got some more strange, unusual news coming up for you in just a few. 21 minutes past the hour, 55 degrees under cloudy skies in the Atlanta metro Atlanta area. Time and temperature brought to you by this hour, Southern States Bank. Remember, FDIC, brand new sponsor to the show and to the station, Southern States Bank, bringing you banking easier. That's right. Now, brand new, new location, and they are part of Rhino Radio Penitentiary and 99.1 FM, WQE the key. All right, ladies and gentlemen. A couple other headline news you can check out on the WQE key page and read for yourself. California mountain lion attacks leaves one person dead, one severely injured. Uh, police release videos of images of child abuse from so-called YouTuber Frankie. Yep. So, you know, everybody on the YouTube is real professionals like us radio people and TV people, right? Their conspiracy theories have got to be real. <laughs> you know, we'll have to wait and see when I'm still here after the, after the uh, solar eclipse. When I'm doing evil things, I'm still here. <laughs> I'm scared. How can you be scared of something that you don't even know? Also, Powerball jackpot raises to $865 million a day after they're going to get you to spend money and none of us are going to know who wins. Somebody's going to win today, but it's not going to be a real person. Come up with, that's a conspiracy theory we should get behind. <laughs> six attacks killed, suicidal attack killed six, including five Chinese engineers in Pakistan. Those are some headline news for you. History, I learned yesterday, we, uh, we, 
who started European smoking tobacco? Who started European smoking tobacco? I don't know. Who was it? I never even remember that. But if you know it, that's giving us something. Good question this morning. Who started the European smoking tobacco? Let us know. Was it France? Was it, who was it? Was it Britain? Somebody knows. All right. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? It's a perfect question this morning on this weird Wednesday. We did. What? Live out loud? Really? We started smoking European smoking tobacco. Hmm. Of course, America would do that. Anything dangerous, right? <laughs> Which of these historic events is the most strange and weird? Our poll question this morning. Is it uh, D.B. Cooper's disappearance? 27% of you say yes. JFK shooting, 27% of you say yes. Betty and Barney's abduction, 13% of you say yes. And Stonehenge with 33% still in the lead. Oh, there you go. It's hard for me to pick between the four because all of them, I would want to vote all of them. So I'm not going to be able to vote today, so. Federal prosecutors, one more time, one more newsworthy note, warn against threatening election workers. Thou shalt not do that, guys. Thou shalt not bear false witness against neighbor. Thou shalt not kill. Threatening them. Death, just because you're mad about the election, is not a Christian thing to do. Well, you know, I'll still be here after the after solar eclipse because I'm a, I'm a I'm, you know, I'm threatening people's lives, and that's why I'm scared. They have brought charges against 20 defendants for making threats since uh, June of 2021. 13 have all so far been uh, convicted. In uh, late February, an Alabama man was charged with threatening Arizona election workers in August of 2020. Not in U.S. <laughs> Not in the U.S. No, nobody would threaten people in the U.S. Uh -uh. I just want to, I know, I know that you, some of you have imaginary conspiracy theories, just like you had imaginary friends. Some of you still have imaginary friends. That's why Sweet Leaf says you don't need to be smoking all that stuff because theirs is natural and not on nation. And whatever you guys have, there's something in it. All right, this is my imaginary friend, Fred. This is my friend, Fred. Uh, there ain't no Fred there. Fred, can't talk to him, man. Fred looks like a gigantic pink bunny, man. He told me that the government's coming after me. <laughs> hey, Fred, didn't you say that? See, Fred, you can't hear Fred talking to you. <laughs> Guys, you can't threaten people because you because you think that I want it the way I want it. Come on. I mean, I think people go too far with that. And for people to go, well, I'm going to defend my rights. That's not a Christian. Defending your rights and nobody else having rights. Everybody, every one of us have rights. Before Christopher Columbus, ah, the Native Americans did it. Well, you know, it was probably natural if the Native Americans was had European smoking tobacco. Sweet Lee's like, yes, you didn't know that. Um, I should have. You guys can get me for it. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize to all you guys. Got the Navajo Nation listening to me this morning. They're like, you should have known that, right? <laughs> I apologize. I think I was taught that. I apologize to you guys. Sue says, it's all right. We still love you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, but let's get back to this before we take a break. The election is coming up again this year, and please don't threaten somebody because if, if you don't get what you want, that's not freedom of speech. That's not freedom of religion. God is not on the side of evil. There's 10 commandments. Thou shalt not kill. When you threaten to murder somebody and you murder somebody, you think God's going to say, come on, up. you're coming up. When I come back, you're going to be one of the many that's going to be taken. That's right. You're going to disappear. Nope, you won't. <laughs> you will not. Mm, my dick. Better not be hurting from better be hurting from laying down on it and nothing else. 
things that they didn't teach in Southern schools. Uh, they taught that to me in, in uh, school. But that was back in the day when they taught black history, too, in the Civil War. <laughs> and the cause of the Civil War was slavery. That's what they taught us back in the day. So they said, like, no, 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 I, I don't want to hear that. Great grandpa, he was out there smacking women on the backside. He was out there killing people, and he was doing what he wanted. And now today we can't even do what we want. It was wrong then, guys. Nobody did anything to them. Yeah, they overlooked evil. We're not overlooking evil anymore. But what about? No, nah, don't give me no what about isms. I'm tired of the what about everybody else is wrong. Sound like a two year old. Sound like a kid. Well, 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 why are you getting on to me? When, well, what about so and so? <laughs> Depending on the teachers, you got that right. I do remember being taught that in school. It's just been such a long time. <laughs> anyway, don't threaten poll workers. This guy in Alabama we told you about, we talked about this guy a few months. We're going to come get you, yo. I'm going to murder you. That's not, that's not freedom of speech, by the way. Threatening to murder people is not freedom of speech, by the way. You do know that. Threatening to murder people rape women, uh, racist derogatory remarks. It's not freedom of speech. That's not protected. When George Washington and the founding fathers founded this country, even though George Washington had a lot of slaves, by the way, we were taught that too in school. Um, they did not start this country saying that, oh, you can be a freedom of racism. <laughs> it's all right to be hateful. <laughs> It's all right to be a rapist. No, man, they used to hang men for doing that back in the old days. You rape a woman, you were hung. <laughs> you were killed. You were punished. Today it's like, well, Grandpa used to get away with all this stuff. He was a good man. No, he wasn't. He made moonshine in the woods. He was not a good man. He didn't take care of his family. He was lazy. He didn't go get a job. He was he couldn't read. <laughs> Old and still learning, laugh out loud. Pete, that's what we're going to continue to do. Swinley says, I agree with you. Sue says, Ryan, you're just going to make him mad. I know. I know. I know. You know, when somebody figures out that grandpa couldn't read, or he was reading at a sixth grade level, and all the stuff that he was doing was wrong, and they go, really? And then they turn around and call it cancel culture in 2024. Cancel culture, man. Cancel culture. You know, there's some things I see I don't like on the networks or television. Or you know what I do? I just turn it off. I just don't watch it. I just don't pay attention to it. I read my Bible. I'm going back. <laughs> so if there's something like in society, just don't look at it. So if you don't like, if you if you don't like it, that you can't abuse people anymore, just just you know, that coming. <laughs> Just go live in your, live in your, live in your, live in the woods by yourself. <laughs> oh man, I mean, I know. I had to answer that one question in the last hour about the solar eclipse. That's right. You know why that solar eclipse? People are fearing that solar eclipse for my new listeners that are coming on. It has to do with those people who do not have God, Jesus in their heart, for real. They are fearing the end times because they know they will not be in his arms. That's why they're afraid. They're listening to conspiracy theorists lie on the internet. And here's another thing. Just because somebody has a phone and can get on the internet and sign up and sit in their basement and do and try to read from the Bible that they don't even know how to read or sit in their basement talking about conspiracy theories don't mean that they know what they're talking about. They don't, they've never researched like my researchers and my experts on my show are like yours truly who's been doing radio for a while, you know. And then poor people that, that 
out here in broadcast radio has been doing it for years. They're trying to put their podcasts and programs out there and people don't want to listen to those guys. <laughs> I'm not talking about me. I'm talking about sports guys. that know other things. I'm like, really? These guys are good. And even if they're not voice good, they know what they're talking about. Nobody's in, what's wrong with you. Why don't they only got 10? Why don't we have 10 people following their baseball game over there? Should be a hundred people following their baseball games. <clears throat> Back in a moment, ladies and gentlemen. Just right. Don't watch and listen to everything on the internet. Not everything is true. <laughs> I want I want to. The conspiracy theories make me feel good. The lizard people and everything. Fred, my big fr- friend that looks like a Pete Bunny. Fred, can we go to break, Fred? Okay. Fred says we're going to break, guys. No, horrifying history is a professional show. <laughs> we're not talking about professional shows. We're talking about people that sit in their mom's basements. We're not talking about professional shows. <laughs> oh, that is horrifying history saying that. Oh, what's up, Brenda? I thought somebody else said that. Like, yeah, no, that's a professional show. So I'm defending. Sorry, I didn't know that was you. <laughs> Say I'm defending you, and I didn't even know it was you. <laughs> I defend all my fellow real radio and, and podcasters. All right, Fred over here, my pink bunny friend, says we're going to break. Back in a moment. <laughs> and none of these things, like JFK is not a conspiracy theory. It's a theory. <laughs> Uh, you, Lynn, uh, Brenda, you're only in your basement because your husband, because your husband won't let you. <laughs> because your husband's like, you do that, you you can do your thing in the basement. The rest of the house is mine. That's why you're there. <laughs> and the doll and your dogs run the rest of the house. That's the problem. <laughs> I know people. What? What's Boo? Boo! I'm just telling you, all the conspiracy theories around solar eclipse. Getting weird. Back in the day, we talked about Bigfoot, UFOs, and and haunted houses, and that was normal. (laughs) He tries to claim your fancy basement. There you go. Boo! Says Andrew Palanis, my lovely bride. I just had to answer that question again, Mom. I got great, great audience members that had to ask questions. Something I didn't want to talk about, but he asked me. I had to. All right, let's see. Hope everything doesn't freeze up. Look, there's. I'm looking right at questions yeah i'm drinking prime that's right one of this is one of your primes it's blue raspberry <laughs> well maybe brenda your husband's like makes you think he wants to be in your basement <laughs> So that you're going to go down there. He said, I'm going to make her think I want to go down there. And she'll go down there. And the rest of the house is for me and the dogs. <laughs> He's like, instead of me having a man cave, she's going to have a woman cave. <laughs> Brenda Gap coming up in the future is. Oh, thank you, Gail. She says, I said the DP, DB disappearance on the poll. All right. I'll ask that question in just a few moments when we come back. Cool. Can be emailed to you every Monday via digital download link that never expires. That's 
Creep Confidential still with us this morning. Yay! <clears throat> well, here we go. We're coming back. Time to get into the strange and the unknown, which is me. <laughs> 99. Thank you, DJ Commando Brothers. Thank you very much for introducing back into the show, ladies and gentlemen. It is about uh, 20 minutes away from the top of the hour. We're currently at 56 degrees, sponsored by Southern States Bank. Banking made easy. All right, it's time to get a little strange with you this morning, a little weird before we do that. Our poll question is up. Gail has joined us this morning. She said, DB, is a DB Cooper disappearance. Andrew Blois, my lovely bride, is on with us. Which of these historic events, ladies and gentlemen, is the most strange and weird? Perfect for a weird Wednesday. D.B. Cooper disappearance, 28% of you say that. The man jumped out of a plane. He actually, an unknown man with the name of D.B. Cooper is all he was, he was known for. High cut Jack the plane jumped out over Washington in the Seattle, Washington, and all those areas, disappeared with a lot of money. The JFK shooting, 33% of you say that. Now, it's in the lead, JFK shooting there's been theories, not conspiracy theories, because you know, all the stuff that's going on today, theories that it could have been the government or the mob or someone else other than Lee Harvey Oswald that shot JFK. That's at 33%. Betty and Barney, no, not the Rubbles, but a couple that was in the 40s and 50s coming from Niagara Falls on the, after their honeymoon saw something in the sky was abducted supposedly 11 percent of those votes and finally stonehenge which we all learned back in the day in high school history we always wondered how they were built or how they got there i should say 28 percent of it <laughs> creepy confidential said at least the aliens brought her earrings back yeah you know they're not thieves <laughs> That's why, when, you know, like I say, when they fly by, when when they fly by and come by the earth, they lock their doors. Don't look, kids. Don't look. <laughs> Don't look at earth. Didn't great grandpa used to go visit earth? No. Yeah. We don't do that anymore. We don't go there for vacation anymore. <laughs> Didn't they have some great hamburgers? Yeah, but we don't go there anymore. This thing got kind of scary there. It's got kind of... Earth has become kind of uh, you're gonna have to lock your doors. You might get car, you might get space spacecraft jacked. <laughs> That's what they think of us now. <laughs> oh my lord. Anyway, let's get into some strange and unusual news right here for you. I got it going on. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> a main baseball team announced it has officially taken the Guinness World Record for the largest line of whoopee pies. They're making whoopee pies, that is. Portland Sea Dogs teamed up with the main whoopee pies festival and whacked out a couple of whoopee pies for the alleged record for the largest line of whoopee pies in June of last year. But the uh, process of doing such a thing and being verified by the Guinness World Records is gonna take several months. You like that whoopie pie ones, don't you? Whoop that, whip that whoopie pie out. <laughs> Sound like that old show. Uh, newlywed game. Let's. What do you do? Make whoopee, Jim and Joan. <laughs> Joan said you made whoopee. Jim, you said you work on your car. <laughs> Guys, I'm going to go back and watch the new game. A uh, new uh, 
newly identified ancestor of the modern day frog named after Jim Hansen's iconic green Muppet was found 40 years after as the fossil was found 40 years after it was discovered, which is 40 years ago, it, it, it was put there, but now I discovered it 40 years later. Uh, of course, the fossil witch sports an unusual one uh, oval shaped eyes like Kermit the Frog, oval shaped eyes. Researchers immediately noted the fossil is a uh, is Muppet like and the species is being called Kermtopus granatus, better known as Kermit the Frog, Kermtopus granatus. <laughs> we got a real life Kermit the Frog. What if it was just a uh, uh, Kermit the Frog? Uh, Muppet for real that was buried 40 years ago. There's a brand new fossil. A brand new. So Kermit the Frog was based on a real frog that had the same big beady eyes. <laughs> Think about that, folks. Think about that. <laughs> Demolition crews are tearing down a, a South Carolina mall. And they found a, a capsule that's due to be opened in 2033, so they can't open it right now. Time capsule, that is. The mall is being torn down to make way for a mixture of brand new retail space and a city park and all that good stuff. The capsule is due to be open June 20th, 2023. Ah, good morning to you, Cher. Happy hump day as well. I wonder what's in that uh, a ca time capsule. I always like to get, I want to open a time capsule see some stuff. That's real history in the making there. A California residence has shown a video of a hungry bear. Hey, boo -boo, we're going to go and we're going to get us a, a picnic basket, but there's none around. There's a trash I can, boo -boo. But, but Yogi, Yogi, I'm too scared. I'll get it, boo boo, and bring it back to you. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm in a Fun moon this morning. A California resident showed the video of this hungry bear searching for snacks in her trash can outside her home in California. Her name was Christina. She posted a video to her Instagram of a bear just opening a trash can like, like a human and pulling out bags. You know, bears are tired of what we're doing because the aliens are scared to come back. So they're locking their spacecraft doors when they come by. So they're scared about all of our lunatic stuff that we're doing here. So Bears, look, we're going to take over. Don't worry. We'll send these humans into the caves. Since they all want to be back to caveman days. <laughs> Let them have to hunt for the food and everything. We'll just take over society. <laughs> See, it won't be the planet of the apes. It'll be the planet of the bears. Every story I tell about a bear, they seem to be more human-like every time. Hmm. There's a theory for you. Now, we don't want to do cool theories. We want to talk about theories that don't make sense. Like, you know, Fred, my my imaginary pink bunny friend. Fred, Fred, Fred. Said, Hell, man, I'm trying to do a show here. You know what I'm saying? Sweetie's like, <clears throat> right, I know. I, you said you're straight edge. And you're smoking some of the stuff those people have. Nope. I'm just joking. But you're right. What well, these people are smoking, they're seeing things that's unusual. <laughs> Sue says, tell your friend Fred. I said, hey, Bob says, hang out with giant pink rabbits. Sounds cool to me. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Guess what? In Britain, archaeologists have discovered some historic uh ties to an, their own version of Atlantis. Oh, you're about to hear this cool. Scientists have spent a little decades looking into a 700-year-old lost city that was on the edge of the ocean uh, in Yorkshire City, in a Yorkshire city, a long-lost medieval City, that is. I hunt fishing as well as garden. Well, you'll be all right, Pete, when the bears take over. But 
Some of the rest of us won't. Steve Simmons says April 1st, 2024 will mark the 725th anniversary of King Edward I granting a royal charter to two settlements north of England, Kingston upon Hull and another area. Uh, the first of the course is better known as Hull, 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 the city on the banks of a certain sea in the quarter of the UK sea bound trade and another little city well as well that was important another important Im, important export city in 1299 well the northern city sunk the southern city kind of stayed there one fell on top of the other they say woo and they said it could be their own version of the Atlantis as if sunk the Southern city, southern city sunk into the sea. That's not a Atlantis. Atlantis has a whole different atmosphere. That's just one one city collapsing on another city, and it going into they both going into the ocean. Wow, isn't that something new? We learn something new every day. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. Come back. I got a few more strange and unusual news stories for you. Or will I do? I think I might do a wrestling wrap up. Get you ready for AEW. Oh, Yogi over there said, Hey, boo boo, we're going to take over pretty soon. The humans are strange and unusual. Speaking of strange and unusual, our poll question this morning is Which of these historic events is the most strange and weird? D.B. Cooper's disappearance, 26% of you say that. The JFK shooting, 37% of you say that. 11% of you only say Betty and Barney's abduction. And 26% of you say Stonehenge. All four of them for me, so I can't pick one. I'm sorry. I know you guys have to pick one, but I cannot pick one of them. I say all four of them. I've watched all four of them. I've watched documentaries on all of them, so I can't choose just one. It's like trying to pick your favorite kid or favorite grandkid. Not going to be able to do it. Back in a moment. You're walking south or on your favorite Certified tactical self defense instructor, I'm specializing in women's self defense. All women of all ages have the ability to learn how to defend themselves effectively with technical drills to build their There's Holly. skills. You can be your own hero. Classes and private seminars are available. Learn today to have a safer tomorrow. WarriorDefenders.com. Hey, Arnold here from Cowboy the Force. Cowboy the Force is Newman's own addiction recovery support center. We exist to provide recovery support services for individuals and family members who have been impacted by addiction. Our services are no cost, and all of our information is available on our website at www.cowboytheforce.org or follow us on Facebook. Hello. I'm Pina Payne with Contour Mortgage, and we're so excited we have just moved to this new company, and we are located at 560 Noonan Crossing Bypass in Noonan next to Art and Jake's, and we have some great products. Right. Our interest rates are better than any other companies, and we also have some great products with the for the VA. Um, we can do a better deal for you with fees than any other company. We have a lot of different kind of programs. Which bone fried chicken? Thank you. 
All right, here we go. <clears throat> here we go. We're going to get weird with you. Stay tuned. Horrifying history is coming up for you. The final period with our friend Brenda Gasky. I like to call her the professor. We're going to have another great story for you this morning. So get your pens and papers ready. That's coming up in the final period of play. All right, right now, I just want to give you the AEW lineup for tonight. Uh, AEW World Tag Team Championship qualifying match has the best friends going up against the Undisputed Kingdom. TBS Championship number one contenders match. Chris Stantlander versus Anna Jay versus Willow Nightingale versus Sky Blue. Will Osprey makes his debut as official member of the roster of AEW tonight against Shabuti. Because <laughs> you know him and Daniel Bryan's got a match at the pay per view. And Surf Stricken in action against Tashiki. Sounds like New Japan Wrestling taking over this evening. Much more on AEW Dynamite tonight, 8 p.m. on TBS. All right, ladies and germs and boys and girls, we got a few more minutes left with you, so we hope that you are going to get ready for our big show. So get ready, get your pens and papers ready. Horrifying History 101 is on the way. So if you're not ready, you will be ready. Coming up in just a few moments, we will have our friend, the one, the only, Brenda Gasky, Gasky joining us this morning, and we're going to talk about preview we're gonna talk about some a couple of unsolved mysteries this morning i can't wait to get into this this is on this day weird wednesday the last wednesday of each month horrifying history podcaster creator host and extraordinaire storyteller along with history buff and staying spooky brenda gasky joins us in the final period we're going to get weird with you. No, 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 not that kind of weird. Stop thinking that way. There's something. Don't be thinking that. <laughs> Say with us more on the way. The Rhino Radio Penitentiary Cruise is on right after this. Good morning. Good morning. Hello? Hello? Tune in Thursday. To listen to the Sustainable Brown Girl Radio Show, hosted by me, Ariel Green. Each week, we'll learn ways to be more sustainable in our everyday lives. We'll discuss exciting environmental news, ways to get involved. I got all the sports. I already got all that. Woohoo! Woohoo! Be Good morning. Good. How are you? I'm good. How about you? Good. Have, have you ever heard of something called snow mold? Snow mold? mold. No. Mold, yes. Yeah, no. So up here in Canada, since we actually have snow, in the <laughs> springtime what happens is all the, you know, like the debris and the dirt and the stuff from the, the other, like during the winter season, uh -huh. so pure snow. <laughs> what? So what it does then is it produces a version of a mold. And I'm allergic to that. So I'm apologizing in advance because I cleaned my yard yesterday, which was a really stupid thing to do. Uh -huh. And now I am coughing and I sound a little congested. That's all right. That's fine. 
just uh, know that thing exists, right? Now I know. I didn't know. Well, you just say it's pollen and everybody else will be like, I don't understand what that girl's going through. <laughs> oh, pollen, that can't walk. <laughs> yeah, just just say it's pollen and, and everybody be like, I understand what that girl's going through. I got the same thing. It's all over my yeah. car. <laughs> I, as I was cleaning up my yard, my nose is just running and I'm like, why do I do this to myself? Oh, yeah, a clean yard. Yeah. Got it. Yeah, yeah, well, you got things you got to do. <laughs> and of course, all that, like when you, like in the spring, you rake your grass a bit, all that comes up. Mm -hmm. and then you sound like me. Well, you know, this, you, you could snow one more time there because this weather has been weird this year. The gophers have lied, <laughs> you know, and one day it's hot, then it's cold, then it's rainy. So, uh, them go. I mean, I told everybody not to depend on them gophers. You can't depend on the gopher to tell you the weather unless it's Jim Cantori from the Weather Channel. <laughs> <laughs> and even then, I don't know. Well, yeah. Well, you know, look, if Jim Cantori comes to your town, you know your town's safe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I actually was talking to somebody about this recently, and I told them that when I was actually one time thinking of joining the military to become a meteorologist uh -huh. and and i said to me the hard part of the job would be surviving boot camp not the meteorology because technically i could just say anything and then i could be like oops i'm wrong yeah well you can say well the, you can always say well there's a front that's supposed to be coming through in this week later this week with a little bit of snow but there's a possibility the sun can come out on that same day as well see you it you could be warm. yeah you are and it could be warm so what you did was you <laughs> you protected yourself by giving two sets of weather, and then in the I set see, I see that being an easy job. Just then, like yeah, today's gonna rain, and then if it doesn't, it's not a big deal because everybody thinks weather you know whether men or women are wrong anyway. So yeah, you take a you take an umbrella with you just in case. There might be a little sprinkles this morning, but by the after it may be a little cold to sprinkle this morning. But by the afternoon, it's gonna warm up and be very warm. So you can take that jacket off and dance in the street if you want to. <laughs> well, that's something about uh, that is unique to uh, the area around Calgary in Alberta and Canada. It's right uh -huh. the Rockies. Uh -huh. I swear this is true. One day it was like in early June. I walked into a mall. <clears throat> excuse me. And I walked into a mall and it, I was wearing shorts and a tank top because it was a beautiful hot summer day. Right. I walked out there with half a foot of snow on the ground. That sounds like Georgia weather here. That sounds like it's, Southern it's, weather. It's, it's like seriously PMSing or something. I have no idea. I, I think so too. Well, one question I do have, because we have some Canadian listeners. One question I do have, and because we have that show on the midday, the guys originally from Canada, does Regina really hate another part of, of uh, Canada? <laughs> mm. There's like a, there's like a, so, uh, hot, two hockey teams that go at it. There was a big fight because one of them beat them 11 to 1. And I think Regina lost, the hot, local hockey team lost to, I can't remember the name of the other place, but did they really hate each other that much? So I guess I'm going to go in, and, uh, I haven't heard of this one yet, so I'm guessing you're talking there with Junior A team, right? Yep, yep. Okay, that doesn't surprise me just because it's a Junior A team. Okay. <laughs> like, not at all. And that's why I love watching junior in hockey. It's like when you get into the NHL, okay, you might get a scuffle if you're lucky. But when you go to junior A, all, the gloves are off. Um, I actually was, I remember watching Zach Belleville Bull. Have you ever heard of Matt Stajan? Yeah. Okay. So Matt Stajan used to be out of the Belleville Bulls, which was my local hockey team. Right. And every game, they would send their enforcers to try to go and do some serious damage to that kid. But it was a, the, the game would just be one big brawl because they would just they were trying to go and take them up. Wow. Okay, this is what happened. The Regina Pats finished the season eleven and one loss to Moose Jaw Warriors. So does uh -huh. and Moose Jaw and Regina hate each other? <laughs> yeah, yes, they should know it. Like again, like I said, I'm, I'm talking about do the people in each city hate each other? No. Okay. But hockey, that's a whole new equation right there. It, you know, wow. when it comes to hockey, wow. know, the rules, there's no rules. Wow. Like, for example, the big competing between the Belleville Bulls is the Peter 
Rivers are OP. If you go to that game, guaranteed they're fighting. Well, almost sound almost sound like it's almost sounds like politics here in the United States. <laughs> I was gonna say more like the Wild West, but <laughs> we used to we we I used to you know the rule that if you break your hockey stick, you have like you actually should be leaving the ice. You can't obviously use a broken right, hockey stick. Right, okay? right, right. I was watching a game with Sage. This is how much this guy impressed me. He broke his stick. He played the rest of the period without a stick. He used his hands. <laughs> Like, no, I'm not trading out, man. I'm finishing. I'm going to get a score. Yep, he was determined, and he did it just with his hands. So he was using his hands like a stick. Wow, what a, what a bad... Which is impressive. No, that's bad to the bone right there. I agree. That is. You, you ain't gonna, so Usually other people are going to tag out. Oh, you know, wow, wow. That kid wasn't going to tag you out. No, nah, he says I'm staying in the game. Well, I know, I know you take, I know you guys take it serious, but that is really serious. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you gotta understand, you know, when you're in junior eight, that's where the scouts are, right? Exactly. They will do everything and anything they can be to be noticed. Well, you know, one thing I have, I do have a problem with is the NHL don't pay. They pay money, but they don't pay as much as the other sports out there, and. They're they're just as much on television here as the NFL and NBA and everything. And when a football player and or a baseball player can make one hundred and forty three million dollars and then get in trouble for betting <laughs> and saying he didn't that's, bet, that's not the only problem. So, for example, if you're a Canadian player, you're getting taxed in like in Canada, correct? Right, 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 right. So I don't know if you heard. I can't remember which player it is. Uh, but it's a player that was, or it's part of Toronto. Uh -huh. And he's now suing uh, the CRA. CRA is basically um, the ones who is in charge of taxation in Canada. Right. He's suing them because they tried to go and tax his signing bonus, which was like $10 million. Right. And, and it was part of the deal that it wouldn't be taxed. So he's now battling these guys in court. because, And he basically saying, if... You guys keep doing this to the hockey players, you're going to lose your team. Nobody's going to want to play in Canada. So that's actually how he's doing. It's like, hey, Smart. if you guys don't give me give me all of this money, nobody's going to want to play. That's smart. That's smart because you know what? He's right because your hockey the hockey players are they don't get paid as much, and um, it's costing the NHL costs a lot of money. And like I said, the last time we talked, you know, Atlanta. Atlanta really is looking at bringing one here, and um, there's people to spend a lot of money to go to these hockey games here because they spend a lot of money to go to all kind of I, games here. I just did a quick Google to tell you who it is. It's actually the, the Leafs captain. Oh, okay. And he's suing Canada Revenue Agency over that tax dispute, and it's his signing bonus. And they said court documents show that he filed an appeal through his lawyers just last week in tax court. And he's seeking to have the CRA's reassessment of the 2018 tax return annulled because of it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's a, it's a very good. And basically, what is happening is the CRA is claiming that his income was way higher because he got that, that signing bonus. Oh, right. my bad. It was a seven year, $77 million US contract to go to the league. And he's suing him over the $8 million the signing bonus for that year of 2018. So what wow. they're claiming the CRA is his income was actually seventeen point eight million dollars higher than reported, and they ordered him to pay the taxes on six point uh, 6 eight million dollars, which is over thirty eight percent tax, and to give him an additional one point two million in interest. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, we're getting ready to go on, Brenda. We're going to get into this. This that's some good information. Interesting, um, isn't it? It is. All right, we're getting ready to go on and do our Unsolved Mysteries. Here we go. Welcome back in, ladies and gentlemen. It's the final period of play. We're going to get weird with you. We're in lockdown in the penitentiary. And, of course, we're going to history class this morning. Horrifying history class 101 is next. Let's kick it off, Triple H.
It's Rhino Radio Penitentiary. I'm your host of the most, the one, the only, Ryan O'Neill, of course. I am the game, 50,000 plus of you worldwide on the Shoutcast Shout It Out Loud across the Rhino Radio media page, Earth Rock Radio, 25 different radio stations, internet radio on the Navajo Nation, Arizona, and New Mexico. We're across the British Columbia Isles of Canada, and finally, the Jordan Communication of Family Radio Stations, East Alabama, West Georgia, including right here at Metro Atlanta and Atlanta's very own 99.1 FM, WQEE, News, Inspirational Talk, and Southern Sports. We are Atlanta's talk station and Georgia and Alabama's talk station. Actually, we're everywhere talk station because we're live. You're tuned in to the Straight Edge Independent Skeptic, bringing you everything you need to know as we get ready to kick it off. Stay tuned. And to my haters, well, I got one little thing to say to you. Tell them, Triple H. Whether they like it or not, I am the man around here. Welcome into period number three of the Rhino Radio Penitentiary. We're getting weird with you this morning, and we're going to head into Horrifying History 101. And that's being brought to you by the creator, the host of Horrifying History Podcast, where she stains the history books with the blood of the unknown, the strange, the paranormal, and even more. Please welcome, as she stays spooky with us this morning, the one, the only, I like to call it the professor. Please welcome Brenda Gasky. Good morning, Brenda. Well, good morning. After that intro, I feel like I should be wearing like one of those kind of plaid coats with patches on my elbows. You should be. I mean, I should be. you are the professor. You know, every month when we do horrifying history, we always learn something new and deeper into to the history and behind stuff that this should be taught in school. I mean, hopefully one day they'll call you up and say, hey, we want you to be a professor at one of the universities or the colleges there in, 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 in uh, Canada. Maybe you could go to, go to come here to the United States and everything, because honestly, your stories, it brings a lot of information. I mean, you do a lot of work uh, and you're one of our experts here. So it's fun. It's fun every month. I appreciate it. Well, the way I see it is this. If you were, okay, I had uh, some teachers in school that were honestly boring as hell. Yeah, well, exactly. And I'm sure that you have the same people in your mm-hmm. educational history. Mm-hmm. But did you actually learn anything from the Ryan? No, just my, actually, I'll be honest with you, I only learned from my history teachers. <laughs> Wait, and here's my point. If you want to teach something, you have to be, uh, you have to engage them in the material. And how exactly. better to engage somebody in the material than to scare them? Exactly. You know, if you had, if these, if these stories were being taught in history class, how many students would actually sit there and pay attention? You'd probably have a room full of A students, Brenda. <laughs> Honestly. Usually, I, it's funny, actually. A friend of mine, he says to me that I sound like a kid, kindergarten teacher that tells the absolute worst stories that you could imagine. <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think kindergarten kids in the United States would like you as their teacher, Brenda. <laughs> They're like, you know what Miss Brenda taught us today? She taught us about uh, uh, cannibalism. She taught us about these these people eating these other people, Mama. <laughs> I didn't even know that's possible. Hey. <laughs> but guess what? I got an A in her class, Mama. <laughs> <laughs> As the little child wiping his lips. Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> tasty, Mama. Can we have some, can we have some people for dinner tonight? <laughs> Oh, my goodness. Well, it's great having you with us this morning. We're going to get into some unsolved mysteries this morning. Uh, we got some great stories with you. Uh, 12 minutes past the hour, guys, 58 degrees. And your time and temperature brought to, is brought to you in part by Southern States Bank, making bank banking easier. Um, we're going to get into that here in just a few moments. Uh, uh, but first, I know that uh, it's, it's getting close to the end of hockey season as we're right around the corner, I know you're a hockey fan. What are you? Who are you expecting to be in the 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 playoffs? Let's go ahead and do that a little early. Okay, so I I, I don't honestly I don't think this year I can say. And here's the reason. Okay. The, the Canadian teams that are doing good are uh-huh. not usually the Canadian teams that do well. Exactly. <laughs> so do I want to go and put a bet on this year? No, 
world, especially with a certain team that is historically one too, that historically choked. And who is that? Um, <clears throat> just because they're doing well, I don't want to necessarily say and guess who, but I'm going to go with an American team because that usually happens. Uh huh. It would be nice if we can bring it home. Okay. Anywhere, I, I would take anywhere. Calgary. <laughs> Because the Flames have some kind of connection to Atlanta, so yeah, yeah. Well, you never know. They, if they were playing like in a golf tournament, I'm sure they would do awesome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, again, like for example, look at the run that the Oilers did this year. Oh my goodness! Yeah. I I'm sorry. I just can't. I want to believe in them. I do, really <laughs> but you choke. So. Ugh. American team who? Florida, Vegas. serious in America we're like oh you we, we, we're never losing here we got the Boston we got we got we got the Jer- we got New Jersey we got LA we got uh Vegas Vegas won last year we got Florida they're serious about it but if they don't win okay well you know you know you guys take it so serious remember I live in Ottawa oh I know right so oh I'm my like, I'm glad that we have a franchise right but come on do better there you <laughs> go I literally Really? I, I haven't gone to one yet because I Why? know that, well, it's probably they're going to end up with a lot. <laughs> well, you need to go and have fun anyway, even if they lose. I mean, your team is Calgary. Your team is Calgary, so you can make a flames, 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 flames right there in Ottawa. Come on. <laughs> I can well, see it. I actually have worn my jersey here. And let's just say I got food a few times. Okay? <laughs> I, I can take that. And my husband, he wore his uh, Montreal, and everybody cheered him like, you guys disgust me. And that was just <laughs> and that was just in the restaurant last week, right? <laughs> that was just when we went skating on the Rito uh, yeah. in town. It's uh, here. It's the world's biggest outdoor skating rink. Uh-huh. And we went skating on it and we of course we wore our jerseys and well, I got boo. <laughs> <laughs> boo, boo. I'm we do take our hockey seriously. I know you do. All right, we're going to get into the story this morning and everything. Uh, but I, I want to ask you this question. I got up from my, my poll question I got up, which is helping out my YouTube page a lot. Which of these historic events was the most strange and weird? Now, I'm going to ask you this. Uh, here's the four choices. D.B. Cooper's disappearance, JFK shooting, Betty and Barney's uh, abduction, or Stonehenge. Which one? <laughs> I would definitely go with Betty and Bernie. All right. Because the reality of it is, it's about horrible the way I'm supposed to say it, but uh-huh. assassinations occur. People do rob banks, even though it's a really great plan. Right. But people will, are, you know, rob banks. Yep. And, well, you know, Stonehenge was there. And they kind of have an idea of maybe what it was 
confused for. I'm thinking what time they could maybe we'll be able to figure that out. But right. how do you prove an alien? Right. Like how do you prove that Betty and Bernie was real? But the same thing. I'm actually trying to vote yes that it was for one simple reason. Uh-huh. Betty and Bernie had a lot to lose, and they didn't try to gain money out of this. Ex- yep. Exactly. So and- why would you go forward if you knew that you were going to take a hit? Yep, yep, yeah. They're coming back from their honeymoon and Niagara Falls, and this happens, and they're like, you know, they were like, oh, 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 why was y'all, what, what huh? <laughs> but at least they didn't hurt the dog, because I'm telling you, that's good. If it was me and somebody hurt my darling little gizmo, <laughs> I, would, I would lose my mind. I don't care if you're an alien or a person, <laughs> I would go at you. <laughs> you hear that, don't you, Alf out there, you know, ET, you guys hear that, right? Yeah, I make a ship you, you, you alien, if you try to hurt my dog. That's right. She's gonna get you. She's gonna turn. She's gonna turn Southern Canada on you and go. Don't come over here, boy. I'm gonna shoot you. <laughs> yeah, don't push it. Don't push it for a mama. Don't That's it. right. That's right. Well, let's jump into it. We've had some fun leading into our stories this morning. Uh, we're gonna talk about a couple of different unsolved mysteries. So let's go ahead and jump into it, Brenda. Well, first thing I wanted just to put out there is. You know what my favorite show was when I was a kid? Well, let me guess. Unsolved Mysteries? Ding, 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 ding. Ah! I mean, the reason is, because who doesn't love a good mystery, Ryan? And especially when you hit the end and you find out who the bad guy was. Mm-hmm. The thing is that I loved about Unsolved Mysteries, the show, is right. you don't get that usual satisfying ending of who the bad guy really was. Exactly. Some of these things, the things that they put on this show were just strange and unsolved. And actually, the cases that I'm talking about today have been on that show before. And the first one, I actually don't think anyone wants it solved. Oh, really? Well, when we get to the end of each story, I want you to tell me who do you think the guilty party is. All right. That all right. really uh, happened. All right. Let me take notes here. I got my paper ready, and we're going to take notes. Got to have notes. <laughs> there you go. So, so I'm going to start. The first story actually started on June 1st, 1934, when a man named Ken McElroy was born. Mm-hmm. He was the 15th of 16 kids in in Overland Park in Kansas. Now, his parents, Tony and Mabel, were poor migrant farmers. And they kind of drifted with their children between Kansas and the Ozarks, just basically following the work for years, before they settled down in Skidmore, Missouri. So very early on in his life, Ken was considered the town bully. He uh, dropped out of school when he hit the eighth grade. And by the age of 18, he was seriously injured after a steel lab fell him on a, at a construction site. Head injury and chronic pain. So what they had done to, in, seriously, like in the in since these times, was they realized that head injuries and chronic pain may drive people to do things that they didn't do beforehand. So right. we're not sure if that is the situation here because Ken was a bully beforehand, but it could have contributed to what happened next. So after this accident, Ken actually changed. He started going out his way to make people fear him through intimidating them. Now, the thing is, he was a big man, and that's what he loved. He was about 270 pounds, and he loved that due to his physical size, height, and weight, that people were afraid of him. He started doing what he wanted, when he wanted, and often it was in front of witnesses that wouldn't speak up in front of him. Right. Now, Ken made his living by leasing the land for his farm. He would trade and uh, race dogs. He sold livestock, grain, alcohol, gasoline, and antiques, and that's how he made his living. With all that said, Ken's former lawyer reported that Ken was charged with various crimes at least three times a year, Ryan, and wow. he escaped conviction all but one time. Now, Ken would brag to the people in Skidmore that he had a high-powered lawyer, and because of that and his size, he could do whatever he wanted, and not one person in Skidmore could stop him. Now, Hmm. Ken also had another bad habit. He loved intimidating any witnesses to the crimes he committed or the victims of the crimes he committed. He would follow them. He would spy on them from his vehicle when he parked outside their home. And after he started doing this sort of intimidation tra- or t- or tactic, the witnesses would just be too afraid to testify against him. So what crimes are we talking about here, Ryan? I'm going to give you the list. Okay. His, his alleged crimes included robbery, harassing and assaulting women, destroying property, verbal threats, assault, and shooting two people. Now, just to give you a little hint here, one of those two people he shot, Ken shot him when he was trespassing and trying to rob 
their property. What? And now, he also was accused of committing sexual assault against two underage girls. And what Ken did to get himself out of that is he just married them. If he married them, then he wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to testify against him, right? Right. Ugh. So one of these girls, her name was Trina McLeod, and she was Ken's partner at the time of his death. Now, it's said that Trina was his third wife, but no one's really for sure here, because Ken's marriages overlapped. But one thing for sure about Ken, it was his preference was for young girls about 13 to 14 years of age. Ugh. And Trina was only 14 years old when she became entangled with Ken. Now, soon after Trina had their first child, she actually tried to escape back to her parents' house, according to locals. Now, Ken's response in this was to burn down her parents' house and shoot their dog. But a, a concerning this, yeah. Trina actually told People Magazine in 1981 that her parents' house fire was actually faulty wiring, but she didn't say what, or wouldn't say what happened to the family dog. So, not only the people in the community were terrified of this guy, Ryan, law enforcement were scared of him too. And the reason was, it was just common knowledge that Ken was heavily armed at all times, and he had absolutely no, no moral objection to shooting a cop. Now, because of this, those who lived in and around Skidmore, they just had this overpowering feeling that the law failed them. But then came an incident that would change everything, Ryan. On April 25th, 1980, Ken's eight-year-old daughter, Tanya, she went into the town's general store, who was owned by Ernest Bowenkamp. Evelyn Sumney was the clerk that was working there that day, and she saw Tanya stealing a piece of candy and trying to walk out. So she stopped her and told her to return it back to the shelf. So when Ken heard about this, he was so furious that he started to stalk the entire Bowen Camp family. On July 8th, Ken parked his truck in an alley behind this store. He started to threaten Ernest, and then he shot him with a shotgun at close range. Now, believe it or not, he was shot in the neck, and Ernest survived this. Mm -hmm. So now, Ken was arrested and charged with attempted murder, and now people in Skidmore start to think that, well, maybe Ken is going to seriously, like, serve some serious time here. Right. Maybe we're going to be okay. Wow. But his trial was set for August 18th, and just like he did in the past, Ken just started his campaign on terror against the whole Bowen Camp family and their supporters and any witnesses because he was trying to, again, intimidate them into not testifying. Now, also during this time, the prosecuting attorney on the case resigned. A lot of people believe that Ken got to him too, but they don't know for sure because he wasn't talking and still hasn't. But it didn't work on the prosecutor who was hired to fill that guy's position. So David Baer, he was actually a new attorney, and he succeeded when the people before him didn't. He was able to get Ken convicted, but not for attempted murder. To make sure he can get Ken convicted, David changed the charges to knowingly causing a serious physical injury versus attempting to kill him. So the judge released Ken on a $40,000 bail pending his appeal. Now, Ken, he didn't see this as any deterrent at all. He literally said during his trial, and I'm going to quote him here, the jury convicted me and they gave me two years. But I'll tell you what, I'll never go to jail. I'll appeal and get off. I've been fighting the law since I've been 13 and I'm damn near 50. I've been arrested for over 53 felonies and this is the first one I lost. Wow. So, can you imagine a guy just saying that in court right in front of the judge? No, but he did, so wow. It's almost like that, I don't know if you've seen the video of that guy in Vegas where he was back yes. in the days all over the internet where he was getting, uh, he was for assault. And he's like, yes, I've changed, sir, I've changed. And then he dives over and attacks the judge. Judge, yes. Same sort of idea I'm going with. Mm -mm. So here's the thing. Ken was so confident in himself after he got released, he literally was seen with a rifle and a bayonet in Skidmore's local bar. <sighs> that, that tells you right there, he couldn't care less, Ryan. Ah, uh, yes. But, now, wow. while he was in the DG Tavern, Ken was heard making very, very graphic threats on how he was going to murder Ernest. So this got back to the police, and he was arrested for violating his bail conditions. But this only resulted in his hearing being delayed now until July 20th. Wow. Now, during these events, the locals decided to call a meeting on July 10th, 10 days before his court date, in the town's Legion Hall, which was just down the street from the tavern. Mm -hmm. There was about 60 people there that day, and two of the attendees was the local mayor and the sheriff. So the agenda of this meeting, believe it or not, was to discuss what could legally occur to stop Ken from harming anyone else. So right here is when the town got a little peeved when the sheriff suggested that maybe they just could create a neighborhood watch. Ugh. Wouldn't you be pissed off too? 
Yeah. Let's just create a neighborhood watch to keep it, keep this violent uh, bully from doing anything to us. <laughs> and considering the fact that he's ready, he goes and threatens those to be, you know, everyone right. else. You think that's a great idea? Not really. Um, people get more thought that was a horrible idea. I agree. And they started talking again about how the system failed them and how nothing was going to stop Ken. But then those in the meeting heard that somebody just seen Ken and Trina going into the DEG tavern down the street where they were having drinks. So the meeting was quickly adjourned and the entire group of about 60 people walked down the street to the bar. Some of these guys flanked Ken's truck. The others went inside to watch Ken and or Ken and Trina to see when they're done their drink. Right. When then, then they see Ken and Trina out of the bar and get into their truck, and these people follow. So Trina was sitting. Ken was sitting in the driver's seat, and he lit a cigarette. Moments later, Trina would later claim that she looked over her shoulder and saw somebody take a rifle out of the back of the truck and point it at Ken. Shots were fired, and Trina just jumped out of the truck as she landed on the street. Trina was picked up by a local man named Jack Clement, and then he walked her towards the town's bank just to keep her safe. Now, at this point, Ken Gluck ran out. He died from being shot twice from behind, and not one of those 60 people called an ambulance. So, police would find bullet casings from two different guns at this scene. And even though there was about 60 witnesses to the crime ride, no one would say who shot Ken, except Trina. Now... This, or to this day, this person is the only suspect, the one that Trina named. Mm-hmm. And his name is Del Clement, who just happened to be a partial owner of the DG Tavern. Ah. His name was the only one linked to Ken's murder. Now, Del passed away in 2009, and from this event to the time of his death, he denied that he did anything at all. So my question to you is this. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on this mystery? Do you think anyone will ever be charged with this murder? I don't think no one will ever be charged with this murder whatsoever. I think it's going to stay unsolved, and I think the town will be happy with that. I agree. I because mean, if you think about it, if a person loses their life with 60 people witnessing this, but nobody saw anything, I don't think this will ever be solved. And I think that the town decided to do like a vigilante justice, and they're going to protect this person until the end of their day. Mm-hmm. And, and I think that if the bar owner or the partial bar owner was the one that did it, he probably was tired of this guy coming and bullying his staff and people. And and if he did do it, I'm not saying he did, but if he did do it, it's, it's kind of defense, you know, and, and he would be protected. Even though he's passed away now, he, you know, you got to think, those are bar owners. You're not going to go in their bar and mess with the people, other people that are going in there. So, um, yeah. But- so, more than one person involved. Oh, for sure. Right? Because yeah. remember, they found they found shell casings from two different guns. Yes. So it's not it's not just the bar owner. It's somebody else in that 60. But clearly everyone's protecting them. Well you'd have more than one gun going off so that you couldn't uh match the 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 bullet that finished the bullets that finished him off with with the gun because we don't know. It could have been one bullet from different guns that he got shot twice. It could have been two different guns that shot him, and you can't match up the bullets because they're two different bullets. It could have been a plan all along. The, these people, okay. smart. I mean, smart. People don't, people like that are smart. So, like it, it almost sounds like it was a vigilante thing that came at the last second, but yeah. maybe it wasn't. No. No, they had them meetings, and don't, don't, think, they, don't think they didn't take that name. They took their neighborhood watch. Very seriously, and they—oh yeah, they, they, they were watching all right. Yeah, and they had their neighborhood watch meetings afterwards and said, "All right, guys, this is what we're going to do." And uh, <laughs> they have it. <laughs> now, our next story is actually an unsolved murder too, but this one is the first one is pretty simple. We're probably never going to figure out this ending, but the other one has a possibility to be solved, but it's a little bit more confusing. Okay, we'll so, get into that when we get back from the break. We're going to take a break. Uh, give a little synopsis of what we're about to talk about before we take a break, uh, Brenda. Well, it's the story about a guy who ended up dead, but it doesn't make any sense of his time of death in comparison to how he composed he was. Ah, all right. We're going to take a break. When we come back, our second story of the morning is next. And uh, stay with us more. Rhino Radio Penitentiary, you're in lockdown with us. We have Brenda Gasky from Horrifying History. 
and the creator and host of the podcast that's bringing you the staining the 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 history pages with the blood of the unknown, paranormal, and strange. We'll get into that. Horrified History 101 continues after this. I'm taking my notes. You better be too. All right, we're at break. So what's new and exciting with you? Me? Uh, well, we're, it's been a good, good two days. The last two days, I've got uh, some pretty decent accounts called me and want to start doing some things and Nice. Yeah, I want to start doing some advertising. It's like they call me and send me messages. Let's talk, and and I'm like, oh wait a minute, that's a <laughs> that's a pretty big account. So, yeah. we'll have a good summer. So, in other words, you're you're dealing with moody weather and work, 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 the usual. Yep. Well, you know, hey, the weather's weather's what it is. You know, rainy one day, cold the next day. It's just it's that that gum groundhog, or I like to call it that gopher, lied to everybody. So. <laughs> well, that is very true. Like I couldn't believe that this last year we had so much snow that accumulated. We had over thirteen feet. This right. year we had accumulated about two, which is a very unusual year. So already I'm saying to people, I have a feeling we're going to be in a drought season, which is going to be forest fires. So maybe I should just rip out my front lawn and put down some astroturf. <laughs> hey, I, hey, that sounds good to me. I won't have to water it, and I know that my grass is going to burn this year. So, as long as they don't start a fire and rage across Canada and burn hope, burn Canada down. <laughs> well, there was one that actually was. It was I was actually on. Twitter last night, and I look and I'm like, oh, oh, I recognize this because it was like a video. Mm -hmm. uh, there was it was about about a mile from my house that some idiot went and started a grass fire. Oh, oh as always. <laughs> yeah, and they were able, able to get it under control. And I'm like, I actually went and showed this to the hubby. Like, well, you know, that was the trails we used to bike on, so I don't think they're going to be good for a little while. Oh man. <laughs> It is what it is, right? It but happens. It's interesting to find that if you look at the stats when it comes to like forest fires and stuff in Canada, right? It's usually just two causes: either a lightning strike, or somebody was an idiot and started it, or it's threw a cigarette out of a window, or something like that. Uh well, it's been strange weather this year for sure, and uh, usually people that get a lot of snow didn't get a lot of snow this year, and usually people that got didn't get any snow, got snow in California. There was a lot of snow and floods. And, you know, it's been a strange weather year. So, hey, you know, I'm good. As long as, as long as all the good stuff comes out on my end for me, I'm not even. <laughs> That's fine. It's actually funny. A friend of mine, she said to me, what do you when I see her on the weekend? And I said to her, you know what? Just been working. And I'm cool with that. Because what do you mean? I said, you know, when you have really nothing new, it's, it's, people don't appreciate how awesome it is. There's no drama in your life. There's no bad things happening. Exactly. Appreciate it for what it is. Exactly. It's not being boring or having a boring life. It's actually that you don't have any toxicity. Hey, exactly. Exactly. I'd rather have no drama than have drama. Or if you want to have drama, just watch soap operas. <laughs> My husband went for a walk. It was a beautiful day yesterday. He went for a walk, and I said to him, what people don't realize is how much I don't want drama in my life because I worked in, in, in hospitals. Yes. There's drama. Your adrenaline is going 24-7. But also, I said, look at the material that I write about or whatever. I don't. You know, I actually have to take breaks sometimes because it kind of, some of the things you see or read or whatever is that. And I said, and yet people think it's, they add drama to that, but your life will be fantastic. Anyway. Right. <laughs> and of course, he didn't get any of that. He just went and said, so what are you researching now? And then, <laughs> I'm going to give you the name of these killers. They're called the ben, or Ken and Barbie Killers. Have you heard of that, that name before? I have. You know exactly who I'm talking yep. about. Yeah. <laughs> Good looking and couple. Good looking couple and killing. I'm right in the middle of the research for that. And I know the case because... I remember it affecting me when I was growing up. Like, I heard about this case. These victims were my age. But I, there was a lot I didn't know, and it's a lot worse than I thought. Wow. 
Well, yeah, they, I, I saw a, a documentary, a partial documentary on them one time and everything. All right, we're getting ready to come back and do our second half. Here we go. Welcome back in to Rhino Radio Penitentiary, 38 minutes past the hour, and it's currently uh, 58 now under cloudy skies here. And your time and temperature brought to you by Southern States Bank, located at 20 Oak Hill Boulevard here in Noonan, 470-400-3411. Open daily, 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Fridays. And come on out. It's, that's lobby hours, uh, personal banking, business banking, and more. All right, uh, we're back with Brenda Gasky from Horrifying History, and we've got Horrifying History 101 going on this morning. That first story about Ken and, and 60 people standing around the poor missing bully. I just don't, you know, it sounds like it'd make a good movie, really. It sounds like it'd make a good movie. Everybody in town comes after the big bully and kills him off, you know, or it could be Friday, you know, that movie Friday or whatever. You know, they do need to make that one in a movie, and the next one I'm about to tell you, I think would make a great movie, too. Ah, let's do it. Let's talk about this scary second story. So this is all about a guy named Ricky McCormick, who was born on June 14, 1958. Okay. Now, it's said that Ricky had a uh, difficult childhood, which resulted in him getting in trouble with the law quite a bit. Now, according to Ricky's family, he was actually different than other people, and they felt that he had either a mental disability or a mental health issue, but he never received any testing, so that can't be confirmed. So Ricky, he dropped out of high school, and after he did that, he just moved from minimum wage job to minimum wage job. But he also was well known to gain money by working outside the law. But mostly, he actually depended on disability payments for, to survive. Right. Now, he had regular run ins with the police for misdemeanors until it was discovered that he was in a relationship with an underage girl. Mm. He was arrested for statutory rape, and the police discovered he actually had fathered two children with this girl, and he had fathered several more with separate women. So he was convicted of this, and he served 11 months of a three-year sentence for this crime. At the time of his death, Ricky was working as a gas station attendant, but he still was on the wrong side of the law. It is said that his boss, who owned the gas station where he worked at, would have him travel down to Orlando and pick up large quantities of marijuana for him. After the last trip he took for his death, it appeared to his loved ones that Ricky was actually afraid of something, but he wouldn't say what he was afraid of, and he wouldn't even admit that he was afraid of anything. Wow. So on June 25, 1999, Ricky went to the Forest Park Hospital in St. Louis, uh, claiming that he actually needed a checkup. He wasn't feeling well. He was already well known to the staff of the hospital. They gave him a look over, and after they did, they decided to admit him for observation. But the doctors determined there was no issue, so they discharged Ricky. He was last seen at his workplace by another employee there, and this person was the last person to see Ricky alive. So on June 30th, five days later, a woman was driving near West Alton in Missouri when she noticed something strange just off the side of the road near Route 367. She got out of her car to investigate, and that's when she found the decomposing body of Ricky, who was face down in a cornfield. Now, he was he was actually very advanced state of compos- or decomposition. Now, how they identified him is the cops already knew him and had his fingerprints, and so they were able to identify him via that. His body was about 20 miles from his home, but absolutely nobody had a clue why he would be in that specific area. Ricky didn't know anybody living in that area where his body was found. He didn't own a car, and there was no public transit anywhere nearby this place. Now, here's the weird thing, Ryan. Hmm. In his pocket were two handwritten notes. These notes were not written in any sort of language that the police could understand, and it looked like to them to be written in 30 lines of coded text. Hmm. So the police started looking into Ricky's last known whereabouts, and they immediately thought it was really weird that his body was badly decomposed as it was in the five days that he was last seen. Now, according to the timeline of his last days, Ricky actually couldn't have died more than three days before his body was found. But according to the decomp, it looked like he actually died much, much earlier. The weather wasn't overly hot, so that couldn't be the cause. Mm. So this is where the police came up with a theory that maybe Ricky was killed in another location, and then his body was stored in uh, either a hot building or a trunk of a car before it was dumped in the cornfield. But then came the coroner's report. 
the medical examiner could not determine a cause of death. And originally, they ruled that Ricky's death wasn't a homicide because they couldn't find proof of it. Police also couldn't find any motives why anyone want to kill, would want to kill him. And they didn't have any witnesses or couldn't have a weapon to indicate how or why he was murdered either. But even so, the police, even with all that, believed he was a victim of homicide. So they started looking into a local drug dealer. He was quite well known in Ricky's neighborhood, and his name was Gregory Knox. Mm. Gregory was actually a suspect already in four local murders. And since Ricky was known for his illegal activities, they thought that maybe this Gregory guy killed Ricky too. Now, even though a police informant claimed that Ricky or was killed by Gregory, there was zero evidence to link him to this death. So that's when the police decided to look into Ricky's boss, because after all, he was having Ricky do illegal activities for him, and this guy was known to have a very violent temper. In fact, Ricky's boss allegedly shot at people in the past when he got mad at them. So once again, they went and looked into this guy. Police could find nothing to link Ricky's boss to his death. So as the years passed, police just were literally no closer to finding out what happened to Ricky. So at this point, the police thought these notes may be a clue to what happened to him. So they gave the notes to the FBI and the American Cryptogram Association and hoped these guys can crack this code. That too was a dead end. So the police then reached out to the public. And to this day, the codes have not been cracked and no one has been arrested in, con in connection to Ricky's death. So there's four theories here, Ryan, and I'm curious what you think is accurate. Okay. The, the first one is that Ricky's killer wrote the code and put the notes on his body to throw the police off his or her track. The second is due to his lack of education, his learning disability, and his possible mental health issues, Ricky wrote the notes himself but had absolutely no clue what he was actually writing down. It was just gibberish. Okay. The next is that Ricky was working as a courier and was delivering these encoded messages between criminals and this resulted in his death. Now, the most popular and last theory here is that Ricky developed his own form of shorthand, and only he could understand it. Now, according to Ricky's family, he could barely write his own name. So they reported that Ricky often wrote notes that were similar to those found in his pocket, but they just said these notes were probably just scribbles and had no meaning. So, Ryan, how do you think Ricky ended up in that cornfield? Um, how did he get there? Why was he so dis or decomposed? And do you think these notes could have been anything or were they nothing? I think that he could have made somebody mad, owed him some money, uh, messed with somebody's wife or daughter he shouldn't have messed with, or girlfriend or daughter somebody's messed with, or he could have been hanging out with this drug dealer. Um, I think that these notes were probably put on him for one or two, one or two things. It could have been uh, to throw the police off of the trail of the person that may have murdered him, or it could have just been something that was on him that he was writing and and shorthand, and you know, it's just I got this. It might admit I got to pick up some bread or something. So. <laughs> Right. That how, how did he get to the area that had no bus service? Exactly. Right. So I think that somebody obviously helped end his life. Yep. And to me, it makes sense with the decomposition, if you look at the local weather, that it was very possible that he was kept somewhere warm for a while before they dumped his body. Right. But to me, it's hard, it's hard to say the who because there's so many people that it could be. Mm -hmm. You're correct. It could have been a very upset parent. Mm -hmm. It could have been a drug, uh, some sort of drug deal gone wrong, or it could have been somebody higher up in a criminal organization. Could have mm -hmm. been his own boss. Yep. I mean, and, and do you think that this one will ever be solved? Probably not, because uh, I think that he's not as important to them to solve as as it is to the family that wants to solve because of his background, his lack of education, and his lack of. Uh, of stature in society, I don't think it'd ever be solved. I, I agree. I, I think that a lot of time has passed, and the reality of it is they don't have much to go on. So unless somebody in the future has some sort of definite confession, I think that we're never going to find out what happened to Ricky. Probably. Now, interestingly, our next story, I, I'm suspicious about this one, too. I don't think that this one's going to be solved, either. Okay. Now, since we've been talking about mystery and the macabre, uh, I had to bring up 
something about uh, a man who's well known for the mystery of macabre, mm-hmm. and that would be Edgar Allan Poe. What? Now, the, <laughs> that's what Edgar Allan Poe is considered to be one of the most prominent uh, literary mysteries there is. So I'll go and start with where, where, where his background is, so maybe we can figure out what actually happened here. Okay. So Edgar Allan Poe was actually born in Boston on January 19, 1809. And he was the second child of actor David Poe Jr. and actress Elizabeth Arnold Hawkins Poe. When he was about a year old, Edgar's father abandoned the family, and the following year, his mother actually passed away. So Edgar was taken in to another home, and that was the home of, excuse me, allergies, John and Francis Allen, who lived in Virginia. Now, he stayed with them until adulthood, but the couple never formally adopted him. As a young adult, though, Edgar was enrolled with the support of, I guess, his foster parents to the University of Virginia. But he left after his first year due to his growing debt. Now, this was a major source of contention between Edgar and his, his uh, foster father, John, since the debt wasn't just from his schooling, it was from him gambling. Mm. So, as a way to pay this off, young Edgar decided to enlist under an assumed name in the Army and but it was during this time he actually was first published. It was a collection of short poems called Tamerlane and Other Poems, and it was credited to a Bostonian. But now he was published. And even though his name wasn't on the cover, this is what Edgar, you know, which went on in his head, that he had talent and he wanted to pursue this. What also helped push him in this direction is he had failed as an officer cadet at one point. So when he went home to tell John that his new plan was to become a famous writer and not be in the military, uh, you can just imagine John was not happy. Mm. Now, these guys fought on and off for years, but they actually patched up after John's wife passed away. But for this time, John said, that's it. This is the last straw. I don't want to speak to you ever again. And they didn't speak again. So Edgar, this time, he just threw himself into writing because he knew this is what he wanted to do. And for the next couple of years, he started focusing on literary journals and periodicals. His new career forced him to move a lot, and it was during these travels he reconnected with a person who would end up being his bride, which was his 13-year-old cousin. Uh, Well, it's not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. So, (laughs) Edgar met her when he was 20 years old, and she was just a little child. And her name was Virginia Eliza Clem, and she was born August 15, 1822, in Baltimore. Her father, William, was a harbor merchant, and her mother was Maria Poe, which was Edgar's aunt. So after Edgar got discharged from the military, Maria allowed Edgar to come stay with the family. Now, at this point, Virginia was seven years old, and she was just immediately enraptured with the much older Edgar. She would follow him when he would take long walks in the countryside, and she started delivering his love letters to a neighbor that he was crushing on. But by the time she turned 13, 20-year-old Edgar, he started having feelings for Virginia. So the two decided to get married, but... And Maria, she did not approve for a couple reasons. You're probably going to think it's, it's going to be something different than what you think. Okay. So, firstly, was there, there was that 13-year age difference, right? They got right. a big difference back then. And then came the fact that Edgar was broke and living with them because he actually got fired from his latest job from the Southern Literary Messenger for on-duty drunkenness. Now, the couple didn't care about this, so they decided to elope on September 22nd, 1835. Now I'm going to clear this up. As much as all of you listening are likely very creeped out about family marrying family, (laughs) that wasn't actually scandalous during these times. In fact, marriage between first cousins was legal in every state part of the Civil War. The true scandal behind this marriage was that it's different. Remember Virginia being 13 years old and literally half of Edgar's age? So they weren't upset that they were cousins. (laughs) They were just upset that she was basically a child. And so how did they fix this? Well, Virginia did it when she lied and claimed she was actually 21 years old on her marriage certificate. Like, that's the one thing about this, though. You know, a 13-year-old looks vastly different than a 21-year-old. But yes. apparently, legally, they didn't care, age difference or not. It seemed this marriage actually helped stabilize Edgar's mental health. He quickly earned a position as an uh, assistant editor at the Southern Literary Messenger, but then he lost that job for drinking, too. He would be later reinstated after he pledged that he stopped drinking and he'd improved his behavior. And he worked there until 1837 until he found another job at Burton's Gentleman's Magazine. And that's where he started publishing his own stories and poems and critiques. But Edgar and Virginia's relationship was very unique for their time. Many claimed the two were actually like a brother and sister versus husband and wife. And some biographers allege that Virginia actually 
actually encouraged Edgar to have extramarital affairs by delivering the love notes just like she did as a child. Now, he did have a lot of affairs, and one of these was said to be with another poet who was the very married Francis Sergeant Osgood. So soon, another poet and somebody who was crushing on Edgar named Elizabeth Ellis, she was becoming quite jealous of Edgar and Francis, mm. and she kind of wanted to be Francis, if you know what I'm saying. Ah, uh, no. So, <laughs> so she started spreading rumors, not just about the affair, uh, the affair, but that Edgar had serious sanity issues. Mm -hmm. Now, this rumor actually did damage Edgar and uh, Virginia's reputation, and it did cause conflict within the marriage. But the marriage wouldn't last, and it wasn't for this. One day, Virginia was singing and playing the piano for guests, and blood started to trickle out of her mouth. That was the first sign of her having tuberculosis, and soon, Virginia was in bed fighting for her life. Now, this, her struggle with this disease set Edgar down a very dark path, path of despair, and he wasn't able to cope, so he started drinking heavily again, which brought back his other bad behaviors. So he ended up getting uh, canned from his job, and he started looking for another job again, and he went to New York, where he was working for the Evening Mirror. It was a very short time later that he became the editor, and then later the owner of the Broadway Journal. Now, it was at this point, and some people think it's in the stress of his marriage and his wife being sick, he started alienating himself in the writing community and making wild accusations against other popular writers. But out of all this hot mess, Edgar became a household name when he released the poem, The Raven. Have you read the poem or heard of it? I have, yes. <laughs> Quote The Raven, never more. Now, of course, the Broadway Journal ended up failing. And then Edgar went and decided to move to the Bronx. Him and his wife moved into a small cottage, and it was there that she passed away, Virginia passed away, in 1847. Now, after this, Edgar became even more mentally unstable without Virginia there. But that didn't stop him from looking love. What's a little bit of uh, mental unstability? You need to find that love. Yeah. So, so Edgar started to court another poet, and her name was Sarah Helen Whitman. They soon became engaged, but Sarah... She decided to dump him after he was excessively drinking and he was acting really erratically. So then Edgar decided to move back to Richmond and he started a relationship with an old childhood sweetheart. But this wasn't going to last either. And this is where the mystery starts. Okay. In June of 1849, Edgar went on a speaking tour to raise funds for a new literary magazine that he wanted to publish. Now, as part of his tour, Edgar was supposed to board a ferry from Richmond, Virginia, to Baltimore, Maryland, and then travel from there to New York. On September 26th, the day before Edgar was due to leave, he went to see a doctor in Richmond because he had a fever. Now, what happened from there to our next point in time? Nobody knows for sure, Ryan. He did arrive in Baltimore, uh, Baltimore on October 3rd like he was supposed to, but Edgar didn't go on to New York. On the day he arrived in Baltimore, Edgar showed up in a tavern and he was in extremely poor condition. Onlookers would later say that he was nearly unresponsive, and they presumed that he was just drunk. But mm. it wasn't necessarily so. Edgar was soon admitted to the hospital, and the thing that caught people's attention right away was Edgar was not wearing his own clothing. He normally wore, you know, you see the pictures of Edgar Brown Poe, and he's normally in a black suit, right. so looking all dark. He wasn't wearing this. That was, that was his go-to. But this time, he was wearing a cheap uh, and ill-fitting suit and a straw hat. Which, if you've ever seen a picture of Edgar Allan Poe, he's not a straw hat sort of dude. No. So, staff there at the bar tried to question Edgar to find out what happened to him. But all he was doing is drifting in and out of consciousness, and he started to hallucinate. And he was speaking what people thought at the time was nonsense. So, on October 7, 1849, Edgar died with what the newspapers reported to be congestion of the brain which today would be a cerebral hemorrhage or a stroke. But the problem is, we don't really know, and I'll explain why. Several theories developed in the years following Edgar's death. Now, the first was that he died due to complications to alcoholism. But as we know here, from his history, he absolutely had an issue with alcohol for many mm -hmm. years. Dr. J. E. Snodgrass, who was the doctor who first saw Edgar at the tavern, he believed that Edgar drank so heavily that he succumbed to delirium, which can come with alcohol withdrawal. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are several secondhand accounts that support this. Now, in these reports, in the time between Edgar seeing the doctor in Baltimore and then ending up on the floor of the tavern, Edgar ran into some acquaintances and he went on a bender. Now, that is totally not in out of character for him, but here's the thing, Ryan. In the months before 
Edgar's death, he joined a temperance society. Do you know hmm. what a temperance society is? No, what is it? Well, a temperance society was groups that were formed in the temperance movement. Oh, and okay. they dedicated themselves to promoting moderation or the complete abstinence of using alcohol. Ah, okay. So if he joined this temperance society, why would he be allegedly intoxicated? Good now, question. adding to this, Edgar's attending physician at the hospital was completely positive. He was not drunk on arrival to the hospital, nor did he drink any alcohol in the days leading to his death. Also, while he was in the hospital, it appeared that he actually recovered slightly before he passed away. This is not consistent behavior with alcohol withdrawal. Now, there's another theory. Okay. The next one is Edgar suffered from an undiagnosed disease which eventually killed him. Now, there has been so many different suggestions throughout the years, like diabetes, heart disease, epilepsy, and tuberculosis. One of the most interesting ones is that Edgar may have died from rabies. Wow. Now, according to R. Michael Bennett from the University of Maryland Medical Center in Baltimore, he actually studied Edgar's historical medical records. According to these records, Edgar was suffering from a a delirium and tremor, which is common in alcoholics who haven't had a drink for about five to ten hours. But after three days, Edgar recovered before he lapsed back into that delirium and had confusion for his death. The relapsing nature of this does not at all match alcohol withdrawal. So the doctor found evidence that he actually had sustained from alcohol for six months before his death. He was offered even alcohol in the hospital, and he said no to it. Wow. Now, now the medical records also tell us that Edgar had a massive uh, difficulty trying to swallow water while he was at the hospital. Now, this and his other symptoms point towards rabies. Now, I'm just going to start with a disclaimer. Rabies is the worst. If you have one symptom, symptom, you cannot be cured. Wow. Well, Brenda, we got to... We got to get ready to get out of here. We got a couple of minutes and it's almost time for us to go. Um, um, what is, uh, t- let's get a synopsis of this and then tell us what's coming up on, on horrifying history. Well, they thought just be the, the rabies he had. Okay. At the time, there was something that was being done called pooping schemes. Okay. And that tavern he is was in was an election polling station, which was common in the time. Okay. Now, cooping was when people were kidnapped off the street and they were forced into a disguise like other clothing to vote for a specific candidate in an election and for to vote multiple times. These cooping games would go and feed people alcohol and drugs against their will to make them to comply, or they would beat them and kill them if they wouldn't. So, again, that would explain the clothing, that right. would explain his intoxication. Uh, but it also didn't explain the relapsing uh, of, of his disease. So right. that's why people have no idea what actually happened to Edgar Allan Poe. Do you think he had a disease? Or I, was it I think uh, I think he had a disease, and I think that th- that's what happened. It's very possible. And again, the records show that. But again, now we're in the biggest mystery in literary history. There you go. Today's show, we re- release an episode every Wednesday, Ryan, and right. the tale we're telling today is also a mystery, but it's a little more, we like to take our mystery to a new level, I'm going right. to say it that. So, we're telling stories of shipwrecks, but not Ooh. normal shipwrecks. The shipwrecks that we're going to talk about is haunted by the ghosts of those who didn't survive, even though those wrecks are under the water. Really? Oh. Can you imagine going and diving on a shipwreck and running into a ghost? That would be... Interesting. <laughs> well, I, I don't know what I do, but there is actually one shipwreck specific that we talked about in the episode. It's uh-huh. under about 250 feet of water, and people dive on it regularly. It still has a body inside, and the reason is it's in the Great Lakes, and the Great Lakes in that depth stays cold, so therefore the body is still there. But they say that that body is actually haunting the wreck, and he's Ooh. seen regularly by divers. Wow! Definitely check it out, guys. Like. Subscribe, follow Horrifying History. Brenda, we appreciate you being with us this morning. We're going to let you out on good behavior, and we're going to get out of here, guys. Peace, love, respect. We'll see you tomorrow morning. Awesome, as always. <laughs> um, I have a blog. I just started a blog for my new website. Right. But it's an operational May. You need to check it out because I have a picture of that guy in the shipwreck. Oh, really? 
I got to check it out. Great, good stories, Brenda says, everyone. So we'll appreciate you guys. Y'all stay tuned for Health, Happiness, and Harmony coming up next. All right. Well, I'll definitely check it out for sure.